Let's go, baby. We are here. Uh, the third round of 12 series. And wouldn't you know it, we have two teammates, two players that know each other very well up against each other. Uh, we have Tato, who was third place in his group in Group D. And then he's up against Jordan, who was second place in Group A. Uh, every single round of 12 set has been second place in a group versus third place in a group. We've had big names clash. And with me, I have a big name, Hera, who is waiting for the winner of... Is it this, this series? series? This one. Okay, yes. okay. I wondered why you wanted to do this one. <laughs> yeah, see, that, that's why I asked you to co-cast this one. Because like, when I'm co-casting, I'm like more focused. And I get to really analyze the strategy. So I'm very excited to be here. So first of all, thanks for having me, of course, for the, for the tournament. A big round here. And I play the next one, which should be also a nice big round. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Cumin, Mayan, and Fortified Clearing. I mean, maybe you can talk a bit about the map. Interesting Civ matchup, though, for sure. I'm, I'm really curious to know what your opinion on Cumin's especially here. Yeah, uh, lots, lots to talk about, I'm sure. Well, mm -hmm. we did see, like, maybe a year and a half, two years ago, we saw Cumin's a lot more on arena-style maps. Uh, being able to boom on the second town center in Feudal Age separates them almost as a guarantee from the other's economies. Um, I would say, though, that with Burgundians and Poles and maybe Turks and Bohemians, We've not seen a lot of players, at least with the group stage, pick this sieve. Uh, but that will change now because you have three global bans per player now, which means some of those sieves, like I saw Burgundians was banned, Bohemians is banned, I think. They're just gone. So mm -hmm. I like it. Um, I also think it's a very Tato pick because not everyone has this understood. I think Jordan would never pick something like Cummins because he's not quite as much of an innovator as Tato probably is. Yeah, and right off the bat, we're seeing actually Jordan going forward, going forward with his eagle. Uh, this isn't like a classic arena map where you're completely walled off and you can mm -hmm. just chill. Uh, with the sides being exposed, it leads to a lot more early game action. Two sheep already uh, going towards the corner here. We don't know if they will make it home towards Jordan. Definitely a little bit of early harassment here. Yeah. And um, yeah, I definitely agree with you. I mean, Cumans, they have a lot of options. And especially in recent times with the Cat Ram and Castledge, I'm thinking a little bit ahead right now. But, you know, a two town center boom. Um, can lead to some very aggressive castleage uh, plays. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what Jordan also brings, whether he wants to punish the, the boom with a rush or just simply boom himself with a fast castle 3 TC setup. Uh, we'll see, though, how the game progresses. Yeah, I forget who it was against, but Jordan did actually go for the lame early, I think against the series against Miguel. I forget the exact save matchup, but that was the very important situation where both Jordan and Miguel needed to get wins. Otherwise, they would have actually like been relegated, which was crazy. Mm -hmm. Like The fact that Jordan went into his final series, could have been relegated, and then ended up in second place because of one series is, is just ridiculous. <laughs> that was a tight group. And that was because yeah. Miguel defeated the Viper the week before. So yep. like a crazy storyline there with Miguel uh, and Jordan. Did Miguel actually stay like in the Platinum League? Did he save a spot? Yeah, so he's, he's fourth for the next season. Okay. And then Classic Pro got relegated out. Uh, oh, there's also a, another crazy situation because he lost a game to Say My Name, who is already relegated, but because of Say My Name getting a win off of Classic Pro and then Miguel getting one win, yeah, that, everything changed. And what was crazy was going into the final day, the final week, Doubt had already played his round, but Doubt was third regardless. It was like, okay, okay. this is where Doubt belongs. This will not change at all. So uh I, I like it but you know back to this hera i really feel like this is one of the big time window conversations we're going to have in this series because both civs play out so differently uh one civ can go archers one civ can go eagles the other civ has sucky archers doesn't even have eagles accessible um one civ is about lasting longer in the mayans with the last or longing resources the other civ is more about like huge little power spike here with this little boom so i mean if that's even what we'll see from tato actually he so hasn't clicked say, up actually, yet. The thing about the two town center boom is that it's almost like a mind game. Um, it, it seems almost more suitable for like the standard arena uh, in a way because you can hide it for sure. On this map, you can actually scout it. If uh, you know, assuming that Tato doesn't wall the sides. Yeah. Um, Jordy can scout to see if there's going to be a second town center. But here we are, Tato up to Feudal Age, 21 bills, 22 pop. Um, that it, that's late. Hold on, this is late for a two town center boom. Is he going but also early for a fast castle tell me he goes like archer ram or some crazy crap here i mean walls are 900 hp did they get to 1800 in feudal age on this map no no it would be 1800 hp in castle but he hasn't yeah. gone forward yet so i think it's just a delayed boom but maybe because he lost the sheep he delayed it i would normally see 19 or 20 pop for two yeah, tcs yeah. 
Yeah, and I don't think he'd want to delay it because of cheap. So I, I personally think we're going to see something weird from Tato, but I can't, I can't tell you what for the life <laughs> of me right now. Yeah. But I, I think it will include a second town center. It's going to be a second town center plus a tower rush maybe, or a second town center plus some form of uh, spice, uh, okay. whether that's yeah. walling the sides heavily or um, uh, you know, just kind of doing something a little crazy there. I hate Jordan's walls with a passion. I guess he doesn't see that one wood line to the north, but to me oh, it feels top, like yeah. an easy wall off to just wall towards the wood lines, but I guess it looks bad just because he hasn't scouted it. There's Tato, there's his TC. I also, honestly, I'm normally like on par with everything Tato does. I hate that TC spot as well. I don't like it. I'd prefer it be on the wood line, but... I uh, think it has to be on the wood line, actually. This is really bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this, is... this is really weird. Yeah, because the problem is you need a lot of wood early on to be able to afford, um, you know, farms and stuff. It, it seems like Tato had an awkward start, like going up very late here, now with an awkward position on the town center. Look at his vill between the houses now, to the north of his TC. He trapped his villager. Oh, he's walled as well. Oh my god, I mean, <laughs> what is happening here? This is so weird. <laughs> And uh, Jordan uh, not typing that pathing. I'm not really sure what happened there. Yeah, I think it was a villager or something. But I'm just I Tato, like delete your house or something. Like I'm very confused. Like I guess what what we're like. Okay, I gotta settle down here a little bit. You and I are <laughs> not. A lot of things, weird things happening. <laughs> yeah, like you and I are not trying to be judgmental. All right, it is our jobs as casters to talk about things that are happening. But we're talking about optimal plays, right? Mm -hmm. And so the second lumber camp is suboptimal play it would make more sense i believe tell me if you agree to town center the wood and then if you want stone later make a mining camp once <laughs> your food and woody goes looking good. so that's where i've getting gotten a little shook here but it is two tcs and jordan's gonna go fast castle on the other side yeah and it looks like natato has some free time here uh, in the feudal age where he, he knows his opponent won't be attacking him because you know it's simply going fast castle is the normal strategy not much can happen in feudal age and Tato's taking the time now to establish some vision on the sides, also getting some, um, you know, nice walls down. Yeah. This will protect him from any push that comes in from the sides, but it looks like Jordan's more interested in the, in the center. Whether that's taking relics or going for a push, we'll see. But yeah, Jordan not even worried about the sides at all here. Yeah, Jordan, uh, will, I, I'll be curious to see what he does with his food eco here. Um, if he goes up to like six, seven farms, he's probably just going to end up adding TCs. But he could go for the monastery opening to get the relics in the middle. There's always five. He could go eagles and siege. Uh, siege push against Kumans can be quite strong. Sometimes mm. people just just go three TCs, right? If you can win the race to the third town center, sometimes the vill count ends up being even later on. Yep, yeah, going for a boom. The only danger with that approach is that the fact that Cumans have that window in like mid castleage where their two TC boom really kicks off and they can yeah. like go for a big push. Yeah. Um, but I, I want to ask you, there's three relics up top in the same kind of spot. Is that kind of by design that there's always like relics in the corner uh it, it can vary so it's it's usually two on each side so i would say like nine okay. out of ten times you have two and two on each of the outer rings but occasionally it can be three and one i've even seen instances where it's four all towards the north like wow okay but it's again i don't quote me on like nine out of ten times because it's probably not perfect but it's something yeah. like that um yeah. and it, it i think largely has to do with where the players spawn we had the players spawn more towards the south here, so then another relic just goes to the north. Ah, uh, interesting, interesting. Yeah, but, um, you know, safe, safe to say, just for the viewers here, that there's five relics in the center, four relics on the outside here that you can also pick up. And the outside relics are more or less neutral, no matter where they really are, because, mm -hmm. um, yep. it, you know, if you're committing to the outside, you're, you're going to, you know, not usually not both pairs commit to the outside. There's a lot of things you can actually do on this map uh, and go for here. Jordan looks like he's going to go, uh, you know, center monastery here. Going for the relics in the middle first and a town center. Um, Tato just booming away consistently, but also making a stable. Might want to contest the uh, the relics in the middle at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you can't really fight off the eagles right now, but you can outrun the eagles. And you can snipe the monks. So Tato has scouted, and he might even notice this as well, Hera. He's scouted that there's only one relic that he can see in the south. And then he's made a gate in the back of his base. So he might get uh, scouts to the north. But no real vision on the middle right now. Big, big boom for Tato, though. 50 villagers. And the crazy thing is, there's really not a lot you can do to stop this if you're Jordan. <laughs> Even though yeah. it's open on the backside, it's just, like, gonna happen, and you have to hope that you can catch up in some way. Tricky stuff. Especially with the stuff like mines. I mean, it's not a bad stuff to push with, but it's not their bread and butter, right? Like, 
if you want to punish the cumin boom, you, you would want to go for a much more aggressive early cast stage civilization if your plan is to boom, uh, is, sorry, is to push and punish the boom. Uh, but in this case, Jordan kind of just has to let it happen. And it's not to say that he's completely lost or anything like that, but, you know, Tato will have um, undoubtedly an economy advantage at some point this game, but it will come at the cost of a few relics, uh, to say the least here. Yeah, it's it's that food count that's going to be insane later on, right? Like, Tato mm -hmm. will click up to Castlade with one of those TCs, so he's not producing out of it. He's got farms galore, and, and that food can lead to uh, lots of night production in some cases on a more open map. Or it could lead to a fast Imperial Age, which Tato might be thinking about. I think if Tato could get Light Cav and a night or two, he could then take the map control in the middle and then waltz forward and just castle drop Jordan's face. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what the arena meta was two years ago with the Kumans. You, again, you don't see him as much, but that's what I'm thinking Tata might want to try. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a very nasty strategy, especially if you don't see it coming. Uh, and especially with a Civ that doesn't have knights, because usually the counter to a fast imp is to go for like heavy castleage, but heavy castleage without knights or even cavalry in general is very difficult to accomplish here. So that's a very dangerous strategy here. Mm -hmm. And, and Tato is mining stone. So he's going to have the option to either, like you said, go for the fast imp or just simply add more town centers, make a castle, and kind of just play like a few kip checks for map control. Uh, and that's one thing I really like about the Cumans. They're so flexible. Like he could have done so many different things at any point this game. And now we see him controlling the sides. Look at the top side with the, uh, with the scout there, just waiting for the monk to, uh, to face check him, basically. Yeah, uh, let's, let's see if Jordan notices it because he's got a million other things to worry about. But yeah, yeah, he noticed it. And the scout wow. was not patrolling. So now he's going to back off. Well yeah. played from Jordan. That was almost instant. Yeah, he he almost like had he almost like had a feeling like he, yeah. you you just kind of know that Tato's gonna be there with something. So Jordan uh, will respect that scout and just back off for the time being. Only two relics for him so far. Um, not that much, honestly. That, that's that's very little compared to what I what I would have expected. Yeah, that vill count's interesting though, isn't it? Because right now I feel like this is that moment where that castle could happen. Got a Ville lead if you're Tato. Will you have the confidence to get Light Cav, clear up the Eagles, and drop the forward castle? Or do you go defensive castle into the fast imp, and then your next castle goes forward? I guess it's yeah. going to be defensive. Yeah, it looks like defensive castle. Look at his resources, though. Fast imp seems to be on the cards here, guys. Got a lot of food. Gold is coming up as well here. Uh, and he's adding a monastery at the back. So it looks like he wants to go fast it, but also kind of grab the relics that he's invested into mm -hmm. via scouts and feudal age. And I just took a look at the resources gathered. Tato has 2,000 extra resources over Jordan. It's insane. Uh, at the yep. moment. So it, it, it really is quite the strategy here. Uh, and that being said, he's also up 12 villagers. So big advantage for Tato in this game. This is where having any type of army, as we see the scouts in the middle here, this is funny. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Both players are being way too nerdy about this. I'd be placing six farms right now, and I'd lose my monk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the farms aren't even placed that well yeah, either. <laughs> shut up, shut up. Come on, man. Yeah, Jordan's farms look good. But yeah, like, I if have you have... Know. If you, instead of, like, four eagles to contest, you have maybe eight, maybe ten, then that stops mm -hmm. Tato from coming forward because kip checks in and of themselves are not really that strong. He just wants enough of a power spike with the kip checks and the light cav to waltz forward with this next castle. I think it's crucial. I could be wrong, yeah. but I just don't see kip check being a good long-term unit against the Mayans. Uh, it, yeah, it's definitely not a unit. Like, you, you nailed it there. He just needs to get enough enough units. Like, Ta Tato's best unit right now will be the Treb. All the units he's making right now is just to secure the forward castle. Yeah. And then after that, the castle and the Treb will do everything he needs them to do and take out a lot of Jordan's town centers, houses, uh, military production, all that good stuff on the front. And he's going to also be able to pull back those relics that Jordan tried so hard to pick up in the castleage. Jordan also expects this, by the way. Lovely castle. I know it looks weird. <laughs> But the worst case is if you build your castle on the very front and then it gets shrubbed down. So he has an idea. And, and also, when someone goes fast imp like this, it's pretty obvious to see that score dip. Uh, putting 1,800 resources into the next age makes your score dip by, like, I think, like, 700 points or something? No, not 700. Is that, is that too uh, much? I actually think it's like 180, actually. Um, Only 180? Could be wrong. Maybe I'm no, it, no, double 180, 360, 360. 360, okay. Yeah, that's what I believe it is, yeah. 
But I, I could be wrong on that, but it's definitely not 700. That, that's too much. Okay, well, <laughs> that, you know, I just, sometimes I say things with confidence, and I hope no one fact checks me. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, 700 is ridiculous. That's like, that's like a Paladin upgrade plus, uh, I don't know, plus Imperial Age. But, uh, yeah. yeah there, there's the Kipchaks we're talking about on the front here. Look at that, just bullying the Eagles. They do no damage, but it's just enough to force the Eagles away, yeah. you know? They have 40 HP, so they're very, very fluffy. They're not, they're not a unit that you want against elite eagles. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest, I don't love that castle spot from Tato. I think this whole strat revolves around the castle being more forward, but he did see the siege, and he maybe didn't want to lose it. He does get the one relic from the middle. There's a second one he could snag. Still plenty of relics contested towards the north. Um... That castle's weird for me. I actually have a theory on why this castle's here. I, I played a game against Tato in RMS Cup where I was doing fast time strategy. I tried to do the castle very far forward versus Maginot and he stopped it. Like Tato stopped it okay. with his Maginot, slowed me down. Maybe he has that game in his mind, wants to play it safe now that he's on the fast imp yeah, uh, yeah. kind of situation. Well, he needs the castle to come up fast for the trebs. What's, yeah, but like, well, no, I agree with you. I'm just trying to think, what's your power spike? It is the trebs. Mm -hmm. It's not Bracer. You don't get that. Uh, elite Kip check isn't that much of a change. Um, you could go Hussar, like Hussar Kipchak, I guess. But I just keep thinking, Plumed Archers, Elite Eagle, you got double castle production from Jordan on the back. If yep. you can just hold this off, right? If, if the Trebs don't destroy the majority of his eco, maybe he'll be okay. But also at the same time, Tato is on three TCs and I completely missed that. So <laughs> he's got a really good eco lead there. Yeah, he added the third one later, like after he clicked with the imp, just added that third at Town Center. Um, I, I also have to agree though, this castle being so safe uh, doesn't net him. It was obviously a no risk involved, but no risk comes with no reward, right? So sure. now he's just trebbing the uh, the siege workshop and it's really not as powerful as, like we said, if it was a bit further. It also doesn't control that gold up top for Jordan. So Jordan just has to wait. Uh, and this is the one thing that we talk about with Cumin Balance. They're, they're very strong at the gate here, but their late game uh, isn't nearly as strong as some of the other civs, especially mines here. So. Uh, we'll see what Jordan does, but it's going to be a game of patience from now on. Gets Ballistics, though. Looking to upgrade his plumes. Yep. Conscription. Still loving those castle spots from Jordan. It's so hard for Tata to do any damage right now, and I also love the... Well, we'll see if it goes up, actually. It's a little risky, but he's sending villagers to place a castle on the outer ring. Tata's been super active with his light cap out there, and I think he's done that mainly for the monks, but if he could deny a castle with one light cap, he's not going to complain much. Yeah, that's insanely annoying. Like, that's so much value he's getting. And he, look at that right away. I don't know if that's him noticing, if that's the AI kind of, uh, you know, going in for the attack there with the light cap. But uh, a couple of eagles nearby for Jordan. Maybe he can keep that castle up. Pretty big moment for him, though. Yeah, I mean, this this will be annoying, right? And it allows Tato to, to think more about how he wants to do it. Tato's a great player controlling the game. So, uh... He's he'll he's gonna double check and see what Jordan has in the middle. He's probably gonna see the plumes and say, okay, can't push there. But what we can do is we could maybe think about a push towards the south as he drops the castle on those two golds. But yeah. So right now the situation is like Tato controls the bottom uncontested and Jordan controls the top uncontested for the time being. But I would think that Tato has more of a chance to contest that top area if he wants to than Jordan on yeah, the bottom. Agreed. Um, just because of the, the kind of early power spec that he's got for the time being. Uh, and Jordan, I think his main focus is in the center. Keep in mind the relics right now, three for Jordan, and Tato is on the third one coming in, and also the fourth coming in from the top. So he's got potential to get up to five relics here at least, from what I see. Also, the fact that Tato researches fervor for his monks makes me very happy. I do recall you saying, yes. why would you ever research fervor to me? Uh, and it might have been even two years ago at this point. Yeah, <laughs> but I remember I am that curious. as well. <laughs> would you, do you do that nowadays? Have you changed your outlook on Fervor, or are you just like, screw that upgrade? Dude, I, I actually don't, but like maybe you're right. Like It's, it's only 140. It's a cheap upgrade. 140 gold, and especially on this map where the, the relics are so far. Like, yeah, maybe uh, dude, this honestly, map. Yeah. yeah, honestly, I'll give you that one. It's, it's probably a good idea on this map, especially this map. In general, I mean, it's probably up to personal <laughs> it's, preference. Maybe. It's questionable unless you're Bohemians, I guess, right? So. Yeah, then you're getting double value there. Um, interesting that Tado is committing very heavily to Kipchak. So you might have, like, he might have tested this in practice or something, yeah. but maybe he's very confident with this, you know, Kipchak Hassar late game comp. None of them are quick to fight, so that means yeah. Tato, he feels he's completely fine just waiting, especially with the extra relics. Okay, so I have a question I doubt you're going to know the answer to. Yeah. You know that unique tech where you can get 
where you get five free elite kip checks from your castle. Yes. All right, you get one from each castle. If you research that when you're a 200 pop, can you go over 200 pop with Kumans? Uh, as I know with with some oh of the God. other techs, like the uh, first crusade tech with Sicilians, you can go over 200 pop. No, I, I don't think you can because I think it's free kip checks, but oh, you, have you have to, to make them. them. Yeah, oh yeah. my God. So, okay, yeah. so real quick story time. You'll get a kick out of this. I was playing with Kumans. Okay. I went full Nikov, like 90 minutes in, didn't have any wood or farm upgrades in Castle Age. Okay. And I was like, oh my God, let's go like 10 stables and spam Hussars with my 50 farms that keep reseeding because I don't have eco upgrades. And I clicked the wrong one, right? I clicked the wrong one. So then like 20 minutes later, I'm thinking my Hussars are producing 100% faster or whatever it is. And I look in my castle and there's a second Kip check picture. And I'm like, no. <laughs> You're like, what's this doing here? No, what? exactly. It was devastating. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. In this case, Tano did in fact click, click the right one, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it should be faster hussar production, yeah. of course. Also, faster step lancer production, uh, which was changed recently, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But step lancers are pretty, uh, pretty questionable of a choice. Although step lancers are decent versus eagles, so it's yeah, definitely maybe an option if to eagles keep in come mind. In. Yeah, yeah. So kip checks are really cheap, and they do produce pretty fast. And Tato's got five to four with relics, and he's able to take the stone and gold towards the middle, and the double gold pile in the south he's got. So here he comes. He's actually going to take out this monastery, which is smart thinking from him, and Gordon's already been thinking about it and moving his relic back. But I'm kind of pumped. Like, maybe I've been sleeping on the kip check play. I thought he would just stop making them, and he yeah. just continues to make kip checks. Uh, I actually have a theory. I've played against Yo enough times to know this. Uh, I think kip checks are actually insane. We're, we're all sleeping on them because of no bracer. But I will say that Plumed Archers are maybe one of the best units to kind of deal with the Kiptrucks, but I think mm. Kiptrucks are really good. Like, it's not going to be Mangadai level, because obviously Mangadai is one of the best units in the game, but Kiptrucks is definitely a very solid choice and a good backline DPS. And the thing is, they're so fast. They're yeah, so they are fast. fast. So, and they're also yeah. they're also very cheap. Like, it's quite mm -hmm. easy to get the, like, 50, 60 Kiptrucks and still have tons of resources floating. Yeah. And Hussars only cost food. And Tato is really missing some upgrades on his Hussars right now, but... Man, there's quite a few arrows flying around right now. It still feels like very, very uh, controlled game by Tato, though. He's got a lot of things he can do with the control. I'd love to see Siege Ram, maybe, on one of the sides with some Hussars to back it up. Yeah, this is where this map gets much more interesting than Arena, right? Like, he, he's got the main composition that he wants. Kipchak Hussar with some Chebs in the center. Does he invest into the sides now, or does he go for the big push in the center to just kind of end the game? Let's see. Big big fight's in the middle, though. Plumed Archer versus Kipchak kind of puts our discussion to end here. Uh, uh, it's it's not looking too good for the Kipchaks right the now. The Kipchaks are kind of getting owned, to yeah. be fair. Plumed Archer's a very, very powerful unit there. Halberdier Tech is now in for Jordan, by the way, so that's going to be his food unit to counter the Hussars. Good composition on both sides, of course, here. Also, love the decision from Jordan. He denied the Siege Workshop, and he's now coming in with four trebuchets. Or three, I can't count. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's going to clear that castle up before Tato really has a chance to respond. So Tato's think... not pushing in the middle, and Jordan's pushing back down there. Yeah, and, and you think it'd be the mobile guy, the guy with the Hussar and Kipchak, that's the guy moving on to the sides. But Jordan makes the first move here. Uh, sometimes that has a lot of value, but hold on. Jordan's coming... Uh, sorry, Tato is coming in with a lot of Hussar and Kipchaks to deal with this on the side. And might be able to take that out. Uh, we'll lose a trebuchet in the middle now. And I'm sure we'll still see some action in the north. But these guys are close to pop capped right now. So they are uh, at their potential for the time being. <laughs> yeah, and it looks like Jordan's push on the bottom. He might get the castle. It's going to be close. But he will lose all the trebs guaranteed here. Uh, castle on the bottom. <laughs> oh, it looks like it's going to stay up, in fact. Crazy, those repairs, man. Wow, that was so close. Honestly, if that castle's not in the yeah. hill, it goes down. Yeah, every more time. One more yeah. trebuchet. If it's four trebs, that castle's out of there. Yeah. I'm starting to think more and more, actually. Uh, stockpiling trebs, because people got so good at, at the repairing the castles, no one lets them go down for free anymore. Mm -hmm. Stockpiling trebs to like four or five is four. a really good way to get a surprise uh, attack. And you're, you're saying four is the right number uh, for, for this kind of a, a approach? I mean, that's what I've been saying, but who knows if I'm right on that. But I, I personally feel like four trebs is the ticket. There's obviously yeah. situation like the saying is don't trickle treb. There's obviously situations where it, it makes sense to start off with one treb, but mm -hmm. in those situations there where most of your army's in the middle, you can't go uphill with three these days. Yeah. Especially, like, look at Tato. Now he's like, oh, reminder, I need to get hoardings, uh, and I know uh, that masonry is available as well for Kumin, so. 
Yeah, you, you kind of you kind of have one shot to catch your opponent off guard, kill a cast on get out, but if you fail he gets the upgrades and it's a lot trickier. Uh, relic count is five to four by the way, as close as it gets really when it comes to relic count. Um, but somehow Tattle, look at that, look at that stockpile, two K five in terms of gold. Yeah, and, and also taking Seedram. Jordan need so so the way this map spawn happened, you had the extra stones towards the north. Uh, one near Jordan's Walls, other one by Jordan's Castle, and then you had the extra gold towards the south. So that was kind of split up, and Jordan can't comfortably take that other gold outside of his walls. So he's kind of on a on a timer, and he's going to go three treps again here. <laughs> so it's not going to four, but I guess you could understand not going for four if you really think you have an issue with gold. Yeah, and, and what I like about this map compared to Arena, something that doesn't really get talked about too, too much, is that there's some small hills in the middle of the map that... You can really get your trebs on and, and do more damage to these yep. castles, to these buildings. And you see Jordan positioned on that hill. Tato, it looks like he's downhill completely with the castle and his trebs. Big push from Jordan here. He needs this to work or else he's going to be in a bad position. Oh man, but Tato's in. Tato's got Siege Rams and Hussars and Kiptex running in towards the south. Like Jordan needs everything he's got to push the middle and it's the correct call. If Tato could just wait until Onager comes in and, and he can take out these plumes and raid, I would love his position. But Jordan's yeah, population, is, 90 army right now. Mayans are nuts with how much they can afford. Yeah, they need no villagers almost in late game. And, and the three castles might help a lot on defense here, but the Siege Rams soaking up some damage for the time being. Middle push looks like Jordan actually taking the uh, castle down, takes the trebs down, so a big win for him there. Can he hold the sides? And also Jordan securing a castle at that top side as well, looking for that second stone. But Tato's also there with Siege Rams. There's action everywhere right now. This is going to be a classic, because now Jordan has his gold back. And yet Tato can still push in the in the south, but Tato now needs to defend in the middle. And I still feel like there's a realistic chance for either player to push and defend in every area I just talked about. This is amazing. <laughs> and, and the northern push comes in. Look, Jordan sees it. There's actually no Hustler support there. Jordan could actually keep that castle up if he, as long as he micros properly. Uh, but I guess then never mind. There's an army coming in from Tato. Maybe it will go down. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of the army that came from the south looped all the way through Jordan's yeah. base and now supports the north push. That's actually sick. That just shows how much you can do on this map. Yeah. And no way Jordan can prepare for that, right? So this castle, great play from Tato, will likely go down. Um, and Jordan will continue his push down the center. What do you think about the Onager tech in general? Is, is it a good move? You do have access to Siege Onager as humans as well. I think it's fine because he's floating tons of gold. In a game where he doesn't have the gold, then certainly. But okay. I am worrying that, like, the Kip Tech number is not very high. Obviously, the Hussars are strong because they produce so quickly. But I'm watching the main battles, not the side battles, but the main yeah. battles, and it looks like it's better for the Mayans at the moment. So if Jordan yeah. can get the more trebuchets to push back these castles, if he can continue to force the issue at Tato's base, Tato could have some problems. But I, I love how Tato's just, like, avoiding it. He's like, all right, pushing the north. Big, massive red blob looping around towards the south. And that's just heads up play from him because he understands exactly what we said. The middle fight is just not for him right now. Big moment in the game here. Jordan texts into Elite Eagle. Remember, he has the uh, he has the upgrades for the infantry uh, because he was on Halberdier for so long. And now he's switching to Elite Eagle. Pretty big power spike, but it's going to eat his gold. I'm yeah. not sure if it's the right call, but it's going to add another element to this game and to the mine composition here. He will lose a castle as well that he had used next to the stone in the north. It feels like the north is just totally lost for Jordan. I think that you need a forward castle next to your main ball, and I think you need a death ball push to push Tato now because these raids are just not going to stop. Jordan's at 100 army. If he's not pushing with 100 army, Tato's just going to push from all angles. The thing is, how do you ignore the sides? Like, I'm just thinking about this map, and there's no really established meta on this on this map yet. It's, just, it's brand new. As Hold on, Tato might have to hold my thought. Tato comes in. He might be able to deny this castle from Jordan on the front as Jordan moved all his army to the side raids here. So Siege Onager's on. on the way right now. Holy yeah, man. man. Oh, that's going to be crazy. Uh, El Dorado coming in now. It's going to be Eagles and Onager's on the field. The, the new tech for both players here. But yeah, how do you ignore the side raids? Because the, the sides aren't a small choke that you can wall. It's, it's actually quite mm -hmm. a big choke, especially with Imperial Age Siege. So. Yeah, I guess like, like we said, you have to have a push that's so solid in the middle that Tato can't use his population on the sides. Mm -hmm. But it's also so easy for the Kumans to just, you know, click a couple Hussars in their stables, like in the north where he's got stables, and just 
sprayed while you defend. And if you have Siege on her, that's the ultimate de defensive unit. Like, there's no yep. way Jordan ever pushes in the middle now. And now, I, I mean, I know Jordan's at 190 pop, but I don't know how, how on earth he wins this game now. And wow, like Tato just gonna go for Paladin. He's taking Cavalier. The only reason he's taking for Cavalier, th well, that's because, yeah, he has the relics. He's got a lot of gold. His units, his Kipchaks aren't dying. The gold yeah. units don't die, really. So he's stockpiling gold with the relics, and he wants to have the most pop efficient army uh, possible, pretty much. So kind of yeah. interesting there. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I think Tato has really shown in this game how solid the Kumans can be with everything that they have, which is rare we <laughs> say that. Normally it's 2TC mini boom, fast and forward castle, win the game with like Trebs, Kipchaks, but we've seen step husbandry. We have not seen the unique tech which gives him free elite Kipchaks, which. Have to watch your games for that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know where to find that. <laughs> uh, but even Paladin, Siege Onager, I, I honestly can't even tell you the last time I have seen these things in a 1v1 from Kumans. Probably never. Yeah. I don't think it's ever gotten to the point where we've seen all of this. Yeah, no, this is the ultimate late game composition, and he's even getting Town Patrol just to really let us know it's the ultimate composition. Uh, <laughs> Town Patrol, one of those upgrades that you never really get unless you have extra, extra gold. Uh, in this case, it's going to come in handy, especially on the side raids here. Uh, one thing that I want to talk about, uh, Siege Onagers can, or Onagers as well, can cut wood. That could be a win condition if you want to just cut all of the, the wood that Jordan has close to his base, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, or just camp behind the wood lines as well with some form of crazy range like that. Yep. Jordan, oh, he's got to he's got to try something here. He splits away with his plumes, but oh my god, I just it, it, this it, is a death ball. There's no way you you address this, right? Your best unit is yeah. uh, Eagle Warrior, which is going to be actually Jordan. Never mind. <laughs> but, Jordan's but showing micro. what he can do, but until yeah, it all it, goes it, wrong, it's all micro. It's yeah. all micro. Jordan has to get lucky a hundred times. Tato needs to get lucky once with yeah, the honor drill. That, that's what it is, right? So, like, can he do it? I mean, let's see. He does have three trebs. He's taking out the siege workshops. I've been impressed with how Jordan has kept his plumes alive this game. This group of plumed archers has 130 kills. Okay, sees that shot. Okay, goes in for the SO. Needs another split at least. Uh, and there you do, go. Do, like, that, do that SO get an extra pierce it. armor? Does he get an extra pierce armor with SO? Now, I think it might have had something to do with the hill there, because it did, to me, feel like it wasn't taking as much damage. Okay. But then and again, yeah, it's plumes, it is. right? Because, like, plumes don't do that much damage. Yeah, only five base. They do one damage per shot to the onager. That's very, very little, actually. Yeah. Damn. I was expecting GG. as well, like, you'd think Arbalest, I guess, would, like, do a bit more, and so it looked confusing there. But, yeah, at 150 mm -hmm. pop, even with four relics, Jordan calls it. I remember, guys, that not only do these players know each other very well, but they both know what's at stake. Tato, uh, he was able to secure a spot in Red Bull Wololo for Germany uh, in October. Uh, and the best performing player, and I'll, I'm going to sound like a broken record because I'll continue to repeat myself because it's so important. Uh, the best performing player that doesn't already have one gets a ticket in this event. Jordan doesn't have one. Jordan goes down first game. He's going to need to respond. Uh, you know how people always put their tinfoil hats on, right? I saw someone earlier today. He's like, oh, Tato's not going to have a really good day today because... Uh, he knows his buddy Jordan needs a ticket. Yeah, apparently that guy was wrong. <laughs> because that was a yeah. sick, sick opening to the series. Holy cow. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, the whole idea, um, obviously, you know, in a world where we assume the worst, we can say that Tata throws today, gives Jordan a better chance to get the ticket. But it almost feels like that's not what Jordan wants. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no one wants that. Yeah. They want to earn it. It's, no one wants a freebie, especially when we're so competitive here. You know, making a living basically on, on, on winning tournaments to other people. No one wants a freebie. Everyone wants to earn it the right way, it seems. So, yeah, de definitely not really um, a big worry here with, these, with, with this roster, at least. So, I'm trying to use, and we'll move on to the next game here, but I don't look at military count. Um, okay, so I don't know if you know how to, like, toggle through this stuff in capture. Anyways, from the 30th minute... Jordan had more military that game. There was one instance at minute 37 where Tato had two more. But basically the whole game in the Imperial Age, Jordan always had more military. But for Tato, he had faster military. He had faster producing military. And he just kept just swarming on the sides. And mm -hmm. he had 106,000 resources collected. Jordan only had 74,000. Like, that's sick. Yeah. You have a bigger boom, and you still are able to keep all that military constraint the entire time. Very well done.
And uh, game number two is a great game number one. We knew this would be a long series because of the map. So we have ravines. Unlike fortified clearing, you do need to work a little bit harder to wall up your base. But that is something you tend to see. Jordan has gone for the Gajaras, which was not banned, which is unlike any of the other round of 12 sets so far. And then Tato has gone for the Mongols. The Mongols, of course, making sense because of all the hunt on this map. And they're one of the best late game civilizations in the game. Um, I don't think we've seen this matchup yet in Platinum. Uh, any of the sets. What's your feel of the Civ matchup here, Hera? So, right off the bat, Mongols will have a very smooth start. However, the Mongol composition completely dies to the Gujara composition. Uh, there's no better <laughs> way to put it, really. I mean, camels and the shawarma riders, as I like to call them, uh, that's just simply going to be the strongest composition, especially paired with something like a skirmisher to help deal with the Mangadai. Um, however, I, I skipped a lot of steps. I, I jumped straight to late game. Yeah. I, I do believe that you know Mongols do have some chances, some timings in which they could deal with the Gujaras. Um, and Gujaras is one of those civilizations that pro players will not prepare for because they expect them to be banned. So yeah. that's pretty much what Tato has to work with. Gujaras is a very, very strong civilization. However, maybe Jordan isn't prepared and maybe Tato can find some timing where he can you know, make it work. Okay, so did you happen to see, uh, or not even see the video, but have you seen how strong the Gujara elephants are? Have, have you had like that happen to you yet? The armored elephants? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. very strong. From the Gujaras? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I we discovered it, bro, in, in, in Battle of Africa. In a, in, a, in a freaking map, we went for like a Gujara all in with the I elephants don't actually, in a show match. Was that, was that a show match? Or was it was it a, a show match before the, before the event. Ah, and we, okay, okay. We rolled some guy's base. Like, we literally <laughs> destroyed him. So, yeah, yeah, we know all about the Gujara elephants. Yeah, I, I bring it up because it's funny to me. Like, everyone's talking about the Shrivamshas and then the camel bonus damage and then the eco. And all those things are part of what makes a Civ insane. But uh, then I saw, like, a couple wrecks uh, and actually, like, went for a very just full clown all in on Arabia against Capwatch and made him <laughs> tilt out of his mind. And I was just like, oh, my God. Like, this is ridiculous. Tato and Jordan played a 2v2 a couple weeks back. And Dow just went uh, full elephants. And Tato went full organ guns. And they were just mopping up TC. It was crazy. But anyways, it's, it's I was really curious. Ridiculous. It's, it's insane. Yeah. Um, but I don't think we'll maybe see that here because Mangadai should be able to deal with Siege, including the elephants. So uh, question mark, question mark. <laughs> yeah. And actually, now that I'm thinking a little bit more about the matchup, uh, I think in super late game, maybe, maybe the Mongols can win with the Mangadai. It's actually something I've never seen uh, so far. Mm -hmm. So maybe in super late game, if Tato gets all the upgrades for yeah, his Mangadai yeah. and then maybe a front line of Hussar or as super as it sounds, maybe even Pikeman, honestly. Um, as a front line, um, that might actually work. So we'll see uh, how that super late game develops, of course. Uh, for now, we're seeing Tato wall up early. Now, this is something that if you wall up early, usually that means you're completely comfortable with the matchup. You're not looking for an early game advantage. What do you think about you know uh, kind of this kind of approach here with the Mongols? Um, I don't mind one villager wall. I think if you start to go full wall, it's a bit weird. I do love the mill in the corner. Holy... I've never seen someone do that yet. I don't know if they, is it, there's is there hunt in every corner or did he just scout that and adapt? I don't see in every corner, but uh. I do see a, a quite a few hunt on like in general. So yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it's maybe something he wants to do throughout the whole game. Just walk around the map and mill these four, uh, you know, ibex. I guess that's cool. I mean, um, yeah. But yeah, back to your question. I think if he is walling like this, it's probably fast castle. And I see him queuing up more villagers now at twenty pops. So I guess that's his play. Uh, yep. But I personally have really liked the approach that most players have on this map. Go fastish feudal age, get a couple scouts out. Even if you don't kill anything, I feel like it's always good for map control. But clearly Tato's thinking differently. Uh, Jordan, on the other hand, I believe is going for the scout approach we just mentioned. Yeah, yeah. I actually, <clears throat> I actually used to think that fast castle is a much better approach on these kind of maps until I kept getting punished by people who go up fast feudal, get a small little advantage in feudal, whether it's map control, scouting the relics, getting a better wall, and then I'm always feel like I'm I'm trapped in a corner with my fast castle. I'm never yeah. able to break out. Yeah. So as of recent, I'm definitely with you on the mentality of fast feudal. You know, stable, even just getting horse call the double bit axe and having the strong initial scouts. Uh, is a great way to play these maps where you want to have a slow start and a slow development um, 
And yeah, that's exactly what we're seeing from Jordan. Stable comes down here, but the Kajaras will pick up both eco upgrades most likely and be completely fine here. Yeah, Tatsu's not even going FC off this. This is like delayed feudal. I know on Arena you could probably pull off an uptime with this, but since he had to invest in the walls, this will probably just be... Wait, is it Fast Castle? He's got three on stone, three on gold? It has to be, whether he's Whoa. making it or not. That's a different story, but it, it has to be a Fast Castle here. Um, but I have to agree that the, the there's no way he does people. this. Well, actually, hold on. He's got a ton of sheep. He's got one more deer. And this is at the absolute limit. <laughs> yeah, this, <laughs> this is, is so close. F this is going to be FC into like saving his economy after. Like once he's in castle, he's got to save his economy uh, because he's going to go for mega die by the looks of things. And either he goes for like an all in play in castle or he needs to just somehow play a slow uh, early castle, just fix his economy real quick and then yeah. develop from there. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 and also you need to wall because scouts are coming. Hold on, they yeah. run through TC is like nothing, by the way. Yeah, I think if you get three scouts, just run right past the TC. But maybe not against Tato because he could he could quick wall. But still, it's it's really awkward spot. Um, I don't know. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of like only Tato can quick wall this. Yeah, he's the only guy who can do it. It's left. <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> makes sense. Speaking of, he like had to save his villager there because I think he left his vill on the other side of the gold or something. I can't even tell. Oh but. yeah, that feels in a weird spot, that's for sure. It's it's so hard with the hill, but it looks like Jordan, he doesn't even care. Either he doesn't care to run inside, or maybe like he's scared of the Tata quick walls. Um, but he's completely happy to just make one scout and chill here. Like, he, mm -hmm. He's not, he, he doesn't care to get like a nice cheese, uh, you know, a nice cheese, um, you know, pass to TC kind of situation. Yeah, all right. So we'll see what the uptimes will look like. Like you said, you do normally cut some corners here economically. Uh, so we'll pay attention to the wood upgrade, farm upgrade. Yep, there goes the scout. And for some reason, town center arrows just never hit. There's the gate. Okay, Jordan's like, who cares? Now he, now he can see the stone. That's a really big deal to be able to see that stone. Have to use the market to click up there. His economy is not very good at all. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, like you said, he sees the stone. He knows the exact strategy. This needs to be... This is the, the perfect situation for Jordan. This is the most he can get out of Feudal Age. Being able to see what his opponent's up to. Also, he's seeing the mill. He's probably like, wait, what? I, I, that would confuse me a lot because I, I, maybe it should go through your brain that he milled extra hunt in the back, but that's not something that, that really happens a lot on this map. I would just think that he doesn't have a mill, but then he doesn't have a blacksmith. <laughs> but like, or... yeah, how does he How does he get yeah. the market? It's like, where did the he put the rather? mill? Yeah. Like, is he mill rushing me? Where? <laughs> what have I missed? <laughs> <laughs> he's got a mill behind it's your base. Like, you know, if you don't see a barracks, you think, <laughs> yeah. or like you don't see a range after a barracks, you're like, oh, is it behind my walls? I don't know. Yeah, I know for sure, for sure. <laughs> I, I got you there. And of course, uh, yeah, in, in this case, it's just going to be a fast castle from Jordan behind this. Um, by, by the way, like, do you have to respect the Magda here? Or can you just wall and be like, yeah, you have Magda, but you know, then what? what? What are you doing with that? I have a few camels and I'm completely fine. I, I think that Jordan... Might not have to actually respect Tato um, too much here in this early game because Tato's economy is so fragile. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I've been going through it in my mind. I was going to talk about it, but then we talked about some of these other weird aspects like the forward mill. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> I, I, like, okay, so think about it this way. So sometimes our tip to people who will be like, Hera, T90, like, how do I counter this? Sometimes it's like, hit them before they have that unit, right? Mm -hmm. Like, take advantage of a time window. Travamsha, take some time to mass. Megadai could be good if you've got like six or seven of them prior to a Shravamsha rider. Um, mm -hmm. Or you could say, uh, on the flip side, like even forgetting the Grijaras, you could just say what makes Mongols the, the best in the long term. You could say Megadai. So the sooner you get the Megadai, the better. Now there's obviously that counter where it's like, well, you also need economy. <laughs> Yeah, um, the economy factor is something that a lot of people struggle with uh, yeah. understanding. It's very obviously nuanced as well, but yeah. But yeah, so I, I don't know. Like, I haven't seen it enough. I did see a game on uh, Serengeti between Bro and nice, nice, nice trap from Tato. That's oh sick. my god. Only he can do that. What a crazy play there. <laughs> Sorry, I can't imagine that. I can't wait until you fail a quick wall against one of these two tomorrow, okay? And I'm going to reference that. <laughs> Bro, you didn't hear? I, I stopped quick walling. No, I'm, I'm, I'm too old for that now. I'm, I've moved on. Okay, um, all right. Yeah. No, the quick walling is something of the past for me, man. It's 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 just people are too good against it. That's, that's the problem. People 
are just expecting you to quick wall. So by not quick walling, you just save yourself a headache, basically. Okay. Is what happens. Yeah. Dude, I we have some chat there as well. If I would have, and I I mean this, okay, I I mean this with a hundred percent uh conviction. Okay. I have had some of the most epic, almost quick walls ever, dude. Like the, my brain is there for it. Like after watching like Viper quick wall a million villagers at this point, I'm just like. Oh my god, like I could quick I could get these knights in there. I can get these villagers in there. And it's always one tile. Or I yeah. just like misclick it and I it's sad. And I And just, then you're like you shift delete all the walls, you, yeah. you everything's idle and it did. Yeah, it's you, so painful. You know the feeling. Yeah. It, it, it's it really is one of the worst feelings. And <laughs> one of the reasons why I, I stopped looking for them so much, it, it uh, trust me, it saves your mental health if you just like admit it's just not a not a thing you go for, and then you're gonna be a happier player, bro. It's it's just the way to go. Era's basically saying, listen, guys, if you can't accomplish something, just learn to give up. Okay, just exactly. learn to give up. Don't even try. Yeah. Have realistic goals. Like, don't quick wall, but don't don't idle your TC as well. You know what I mean? Realistic goals, and you'll be happier, and you'll be more successful in the long run. Um, but speaking of successful, back to the game a little bit here. Three town sliders from Jordan. Uh, he is making some scrims though, so he's respecting the manga die a little bit, uh, which is fair enough here. And we did talk about that. And going from Monastery as well here. Scrims I... over camels. What do you think about that, actually? Ooh, <gasps> there's a hole. Oh, no. Wait. Okay. I guess in the yeah. end, he's like, I'm not sure I want to go in there, and he runs away. Um, yeah. Well, okay, so I was thinking Shravamsha, right? But an issue I've I've had at times with the Shravamsha is, is that heavy food costs can hurt you when you're booming. Um, mm -hmm. I forget exactly what it is, but it's not easy to, to mass them. Whereas, uh, you know, skirmishers, I guess in theory, I guess skirmishers also give you more of a defensive outlook too. Um, I don't know, but I do like how Tato is committing. He's getting Bodkin, so he knows mm -hmm. he's been low eco, so he just invests as much in the military as possible. He's also going to go forward with a workshop here, but in theory, if this guy, oh god, Jordan's throwing oh away my skirms. God. Oh my god, why is he here? Maybe, what? Dude, but that's so weird. Like he's making more of them now, so it's, it wasn't like a throwaway. That was just a mistake, a misclick. He had vision. That was super weird. Not something you expect to see at this level, guys. Yeah. Um, now Jordan is going to be very weak on defense. Tato steps the farm as well, and now with the forward siege coming in, it's going to be very hard to stop this here if Jordan's not careful. Yeah. Also, if this leads into like two or three mangonels, at that time Tato might have enough for another castle. So if you wanted to go forward, though it's very weird to place a castle like at the bottom of a hill next to the TC here, I could see a forward castle maybe being on the cards. Yeah, you actually have to kill the TC and then place the castle where yeah, the TC that's was. True. That's that's actually the best way to do it, I found. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously a very hard thing to accomplish here. Uh, I don't know. I actually really like this approach from Tato. Like, uh, he's behind on economy, but he's got he's got now what's the closest thing to a castage death ball, Mangadai and um, and Mangadels here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, I don't know if you've taken a look at the KD anytime soon, but it's been it's been nine zero. So mm -hmm. Jordan hasn't killed a single unit, and certainly can't be easy. I mean, part of the losing those skirmishers is because he's focusing on the three TC boom, and that's something that might happen to me more than I'd like. But, you know, for Jordan to get here, losing four skirmishers before getting a lead skirm is definitely a, a big question mark in my mind right now as he is struggling and he still doesn't have a lead skirm. The siege is going to be coming. He'll see that. Ten kills for Tato, and it's only going to get worse for Jordan if he doesn't get something more than just skirmishers. Hey, you know what? I almost feel like Jordan did... He's living in his own uh, little world as far as the opening he went for. Like, he went three town centers into a monastery... That's the approach you take if your opponent is not attacking you, and so yeah. you're allowed to live in your little world. But right now, Tato's not giving him space to operate, and so Jordan, all his investment now has been into economy. Maybe instead of the monastery, we saw ballistics that could have been a little bit better. Only now he's trying to react uh, a little bit more, adding a second range. I'd like to see more military uh, from him right now. Also, Jordan can't take gold right now. That's a big, True. big talking point. He cannot take gold because those golds are positioned on the front. So that might be part of why he doesn't have a lead skirmisher yet. And Tato is just all over the guy. He's got a couple Mangadai killing villagers towards the north. Now he's got Mangadai in siege here. I also don't think that one camel that Jordan's trying to make would be enough to snipe any of the siege that's here. <laughs> but Tato, notice how we haven't talked about the camels doing additional bonus damage. And we haven't talked about the Shravamsha Rider yet. Like, this is the ideal. It's just your Jara's. Yeah playing like any other civilization with a little bit of an eco boost because of their sheep at the start, and that's been it. 
Exactly. Like, th th that's, the, that's the thing about timings, um, like you mentioned earlier. Uh, units are great, but if you can't have access to them, then it's good as nothing. And now, finally, Elite Skirmisher is coming out for Jordan. I feel like that was a very late timing on that. Third range now coming as well. Tato wasting no time, by the way. Manganel and a Ram. Usually I hate Rams, but this is a good, a good time for them. Uh, because, you know, they break buildings and they get to work on houses while the rest of the army looks for villagers. Tato, okay, I wanted him so badly to save his scout because he would have been 13-0 as he just killed a <laughs> villager back there, but I can understand why he wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, you take that bill every time, I guess. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this push continues, and you definitely will understand. Jordan's gonna go elephant archers. Oh my god! Elephant uh, archers. They're actually not bad, but that's a weird unit to go for right now. I don't think it's, I don't think versus Manga is the right timing for mm -hmm. that unit. I mean, their tankiness is what makes them strong, but the numbers are the issue for for Jordan. You're not gonna be able to mass these things. I guess you know, combined, it could be good. This is, I, mean, I know the vil count's there for Jordan right now, but the efficiency is not. This is all Tato so far. What a sick push. He's actually got really good economy behind this, which is easier said than done. Oof. Yep, 3 TC for Tato behind this. So he, he, all that all that talk about his weak economy, once he got the push down, he had so much time to just fix things up back home. And he is down those villagers, but he will catch up if he continues this push and continues to force Jordan to react defensively here. Big big shots from Magno potentially here, mm -hmm. but not quite landing them so far. It's actually smart from Jordan. He's using the Elephant Archer since they have eight attack to take out the Siege. But he also could lose his Elephant Archers in the process, and they're not the cheapest unit ever. Yep. It's like, maybe it's the best way he can deal with them. It's yeah. actually not bad. Maybe it's, you gotta maybe give it, some credit. Yeah, yeah I think uh, having not seen it a lot, I immediately disproved, but it did push back more than he would have if he just had skirmishers there. Yeah. Also, I don't know if Gurjaras have any bonuses for these things. Uh, I don't think not they early. Do. If anything, later. Just a unique tech to make them cheaper on food, I think, and that's about it. But yep. Uh, yep. yeah, and now Jordan finally takes that relic. <laughs> he was like <laughs> looking at it the whole time. <laughs> that's like that's like that monk's great grandfather's relic. It's been sitting there for <laughs> eighty years. <laughs> no one's been able to take it. And he finally got it. He's feeling good about himself going back to heal up his units now. Um, yeah, Siege coming down now for Tato. Uh, sorry, for Jordan, excuse me. And Tato. I, I don't think Tato's actually interested in, in of winning the game from this push, by the way. At this point, he just wants to get better trades. You can see him not really investing into that much more Siege right now. He, he just wants to keep things near Jordan's base and develop his economy back home. Tato wins this maybe an early imp um, at this point. Uh, at least that's what he's thinking, of course. Jordan was able to sneak away to fourth town center in the north, and he still has a 10 eco lead. So I think it could have been 20 if Tato didn't do enough damage, but turned into mm -hmm. 10. And now Tato getting armor. So this tells me that this is maybe late castle age instead, Hera. Uh, stables for Tato. I'm not sure I like the timing on this, though. At least with Jordan's resources, obviously Tato will know this. Jordan's made a lot of skirmishers and elephants, which cost food. But if the light cap switch isn't right now, I think Jordan could uh, pull this one off in the Imperial Age. This is, this is an extremely ambitious castle. High risk, high reward in my opinion. If you get this castle, you're in a great position. If it gets denied, you could risk losing the game here. Uh, Jordan's up to it and now going for a castle in the center here. Oh god. How will Tata react? <laughs> Magnal's out now as well. Oh jeez, that's so crazy. I mean, if he takes care of the siege, then it's fine, I think. Because his army can take care of the Mangadai. A crazy Villagers. castle. Yeah, looks like looks like Tato didn't even use the scorpions. It looks like he doesn't even really mind if that castle goes up. He's just gonna allow it here. Uh, didn't want to risk going in and losing his Mangadai, of course. But now it actually feels Dang. like Jordan. He's in the better position, is he not? Yeah. I mean, Imperial Age, castle in the front. It's looking pretty good for him now. Those those elephant archers made a real difference there. I thought Jordan would need his own siege, but now he's building up stables, and now this is where the Gajaras really start to look strong. Uh, I don't think you should make another unit before his unique tech. Uh, all the units that you normally go for with this civilization are going to cost uh, food. So get that unique tech. It makes everything a bit cheaper. I think it's like four. Actually, I shouldn't even say a number because clearly my number's are way off. But... <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know either to be fair. Though. <laughs> but it's like, it, it's 25% off, I think, on the food. So I forget what Hussars come out to. But it just feels like you can make Hussars endlessly, which I'm sure you love. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and that's and then this Ravamsha Rider as well, which we are seeing Jordan produce. 
Now, interesting he's going for that over Camel, though. I'm not necessarily sure if I agree with that. Maybe, okay, you know what? Maybe uh, he's low on gold. He's thinking he just wants the Rider first just to be able to uh, to kind of stabilize, secure some gold, and then maybe Camel comes in a bit later. You can even see him getting gold shaft mining. Gold is a big deal for Jordan right now. Mm -hmm. Really? Camel? Do you think Camel would be good? Uh, I, I guess Camel's Mangata? great, yeah. Well, just because you're going to be faster to imp, I guess, and like just like the the fact that it counters both the composition of um, that Mongus can do in theory. Obviously, Mangadai behind is nice, but mm -hmm. I think opening Camel is nice. Camel okay. Sturm is a good composition, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, this uh, that attack in the north was sick from Tato. 38 kills, 7 deaths for him now. He'll actually take out that town center. But I am worried if he were to lose his Mangadai. He still hasn't clicked up here, so he did produce the Lycav at the expense of not coming up to the Imperial Age. Tato also just doesn't have a lot on gold, I've noticed. He's got tons on wood and tons on food, but he only has four on gold, which he'll need to, to solve. There's this Ravamsha Rider, and they're not Imperial Age Ravamsha Riders yet. They will tank a decent amount of shots, but the Mangadai should still be in a high enough number to take these out, and Jordan, I guess, just wanted to save his TC. But not the strongest early imp opening for Jordan. He's still kind of reeling from some of these attacks. Yeah, he, he's literally still stabilizing, and oh my god, Tato really uses the market there. Holy moly, sold a lot of wood, but manages to click up to Imperial Age now. So, three minutes on the clock there for Imperial Age, and it looks like it's going to be Jordan stabilizing for these three minutes for the most part, but might find a window where he's able to surprise Tato with an attack before Tato is in imp yeah. with his upgrades. Also, the Mangadai, so the way this Revamsha Rider works, it, it, it says it dodges units. It doesn't really dodge. It, like, like soaks up Aerofire is the way I describe it. Yeah. Um, and so I'm, I'm trying to remember how much they dodge. I think it's five shots? Five, yeah. So Mangadai with that much fire fire speed and attack, I feel like would still actually be pretty decent against Ravamsha's. Um, though the unit's obviously very fast. Now Jordan gets the unique tech, which makes everything cheaper. Amazing house walls from Tattoo. Also, why did he make a petard? <laughs> There's just a <laughs> random petard to... next to his castle on the left. That's weird. Yeah, that, I guess that has to be a misclick, but oh, he's going for it. Oh. Just walks right past, okay. Yeah. He's on a mission. He's going to go do something else, I guess. Okay, fair enough. Well, there's the elite upgrade on the Shravam Shrider, and I, I like this decision. It's it's the perfect unit against the Mangadai. I don't know how they'll fare against any Light Cav long term. And that is an awkward situation for Jordan right now because he's using Shravam Shriders to chase Light Cav in his own base. And yeah, I think it'll do the job, but you're still using gold unit versus a trash unit just to stabilize, which is never a good feeling. Yeah, so, so the thing with the Shuramsha Riders, I'm not sure how they uh, do versus Hassar long term here, but assuming that Tato gets the, uh, sorry, Jordan gets the unique tech to make them cheaper on food, uh, they are faster. And, mm -hmm. and being faster me means you can chase raids, means you can outrun the Hassar when you're the guy raiding. Um, being fast in competitive Age of Empires is almost the thing that the pro players can abuse the most because it gives you the most kind of micro potential, the most, um, uh, you know, tricky potential. So uh, I, think, I think it's a good choice versus the both units that, mm -hmm. that Tato's going for here. Uh, I always love watching Tato play post him. He's so good with, with like placing buildings and outposts and walls. And he had a incredible, he actually lost uh, that game on ravines against ACCM. It went on for like an hour and 50 minutes. ACCM winning with Sicilians, which was wild against Hindustanis. Didn't believe Oh my that. God, that's crazy. Um, I would never expect us to win that one. Not dude, you should have you should have saw how many kills Donjins had. It was unbelievable. Donjin the whole map to defend himself. That's that's pretty. I like that. That's, that's, that sounds like a nice game. I, I like when I hear about unique things being used. You know, right? Uh, like player creativity. It's, it's pretty sick. Here comes Tato. He's got that light cap number and Jordan's turn to try and stop this. I think there's still a hole there, and he noticed there's a it. Hole. Oh, oh, but the gate oh. didn't get down. Tato would have got that quick wall, and look at that, light cap just swarming Yikes. in. But, hold on. I mean, is it a problem that we got camels, we got shawarma riders here? Is it really a problem? Well, I, I foresee it to be a problem because he can't push the middle of the map comfortably. But yeah. Tato's also chasing some stuff down. He's still got that one Shravam she's got to deal with. So both players just trying to find some open areas. Lovely micro from Tato in Jordan's base to split up his light cap. Jordan has to react now. And there's actually a factor with these raids that we don't see. It's not a number. It's it's the player's attention, right? Like when you're, uh, by the way, we're seeing frontier guards coming up now. That's uh, a tech that gives five melee armor to the Gajara camels. Very very strong, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, it's something we don't talk about too much, though. 
is that uh, player attention in late game is a big deal, and having to chase raids, having to worry about yep. raids is a, a really costly thing when it comes to your focus. Uh, now we're seeing Tato stonewalling the map here, looking to gather all his Magna in one spot. No elite upgrade for him yet, though. Those walls are so good. He does actually have one... Oh, no, he doesn't have any holes. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you, you just don't want to deal with these raids, especially with how cheap everything is with the Gurjaras. It'd be so easy for Jordan to make stables on the side. Look at Tato's three light cav. Oh, my God. He knows there's gold there. He remembers that town center was there. And all he has to do, everything else, he's still going to get that raid in. And he's just waiting with his death ball at home, waiting for the upgrades. And Jordan, his treps are now out of position. And Tato, you can tell he's thinking about it, but he should take out those trebuchets and run right back behind his walls. Yeah, so I actually think if we're fighting in one spot, Mongol late Ooh. game should be better. Oh, maybe Tato's going too deep oh here. This my god. could be risky. Oh my god. Well, he does have a gate to run to. Thank god his unit's fast. If that's Arbalest, like, rip. Dude, I'm pretty sure the, the Gurjara camels are like one-shotting these Mangadite. Like, I don't even <laughs> want to know the stats on that, dude. They are so incredibly strong. You saw a few Mangadite just go down there instantly. Yeah, 50% more bonus damage, and then they have plus four melee armor. Any hit they get is going to be wild here. Uh, yeah. Jordan is like, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for opening this gate. And now Tata's got to deal with these Ravamshas. It's going to be full stable. That's the thing that, I mean, there's a million things that make your jars strong. There's a million reasons why you'll probably ban them tomorrow if you have a chance to draft. But, <laughs> first um, Burgundians. For, for yeah, sure Burgundians. Yeah. But, but, like, you're only producing stable units. Yeah. That's all you need. Like, there are other things that Civ can do really well, but you just get stable upgrades, spam out of your stable, and all your units are also cheaper. So, incredible momentum you can get from that. But for Jordan, I think he must be so frustrated he lost those trebs. Because look at this massive ball he has in the middle of the map, and he can't take that castle out. The castle's just sitting there. He's stuck. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is now, like, the, the stone walls might be the big difference when it comes... Oh, wait, we're seeing infantry armor coming in from Tato. Is he going pikeman? Yeah. Uh, pikeman. Well, I, I literally called that. It sounds weird, but it, it's actually good, because it's the only thing that gives a meat shield to the manga that here. Although I, it's not a good option for Mongols, good. usually. I, yeah, like... So there was another game. It was uh, Yo versus Bro in their first round in your group, mm -hmm. and what Bro won that two one, and it was at that point people knew Gurjaras were OP, but not to the same extent. And Yo had an eco lead. He went Mangadai, Pikeman, and he still got completely thrashed, which is like wow. full Shravamsha. Now that was Serengeti though, so very different situation. But yeah. I think we're seeing Jordan's finding his spots. Like it's constant. There's always something breaking through. There's always some avenue for him to raid, and Jordan also does have three relics as well. So those three relics means he's better in the long run. So he's really committing to these walls. It's pretty much the, the best defense from Tato. Why is Jordan not bringing the siege here? Like, he's got one trap, but this is what we talked about. Four trebs, you one-shot a wall, yep. then you put them on a castle. Obviously, there's the risk that Manga that come kill them, but you just need to get one opening here to then use the flood units. That's what I feel like it should be the game plan here for Jordan. Look, he has 58 farmers and he has 3,500 food right now. Oh, uh, oh he, he took a tree. Did yeah, he, take, he cut the tree. He hit the tree. Yeah. He's in. That's really smart. Does he want to be in against pikes and a few Mangadai? I think he does. With those resources, I think he'll take this. Yeah, you lose units initially, but then you open up the walls and then you, your follow-up is what, what could actually hurt Tato. He's going to go for the raids on one side, also push down the middle. The only thing I don't like is the one treb on the castle that's not nearly enough to actually do any kind of push trying to think how much damage a pikeman actually does against the camel with extra melee armor and pikes not having as much bonus damage i'm gonna rely on viewers out there to handle that and get that information to us but yeah if jordan had four trebs hitting that castle now it'd be perfect right if he has that the castle's already gone and then these raids catch up with tato and tato's reacting 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 there's still a slight chance here for tato because that mass for Jordan is much smaller now because he sacrificed a lot of units, and there goes a the trap. I it, hate it casting and seeing trickle trebbing, man. It, <laughs> it's one of the worst things. I see it way too frequently. Uh, I, I swear, in game, it's that it seems like a good idea to just like send the treb in because you just create from the tr castle, you put the waypoint on the enemy castle, and you're like, yeah, I, I did my job here. Yep, but it yep. looks it looks awkward, of course. Man, I mean, this Ravam just got cleared up in the back. Suddenly, Jordan, even though he's trying to get a castle down north towards, like, the right side, Jordan might not push this castle in the middle. He does have 26 Ravam So I just like to remind people, this is elite Mangadai. This is, like, Mongols at their with their peak unit 
against a stable unit. And still, Jordan continues to push. Pikeman, uh, Mangadai. 50 Mangadai right now. No, they're all uh, not on the, same, on the same part of the screen. Jordan will need scrims, though. I, I, I don't like this... Um... This I, I'm the, I'm one of the most stubborn players out there. So when I'm saying that you can't be stubborn right now, then you probably just can't. And yeah, I, I maybe think that you, you need you need scrim right now because it's long term. You can't you can never kill these mangada. There's 50 mangada on the screen. All you can do is raid, but raiding doesn't do anything if the guy has 50 mangada already. He's gonna go chakrams here. Also, Tato no. with some quick houses and walls. Oh, he's gonna, those chakrams or not chakrams? Sorry, the other unit can't get through. And finally, now I, I guess there's still a risk for Tato. He could lose ground on the other side, but suddenly but things have slowed good. down, and 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 like the Mangadai are showing their power. <gasps> Wait, no, no, Shakram are not. Oh good, yes, oh, they my, are. Oh my god. Yes, they no, are. Bro, no yes, they way. are. They're really good, actually, Hera. Well, obviously, if you run into them, they're really good. <laughs> what am I watching? And, and oh. even Tato knows. Oh my god. I mean, oh I have God. seen Chakrams melt 50 Arbalest in one throw because the, the pass-through damage. So the Gurjara is not, they're not finished yet, but oh Holy my moly. God, dude. That was that was the perfect moment to show Chakrams, I guess, but... Uh, <laughs> it was the classic, I mean, oh, this unit's not even good here, and then <laughs> everything no, no, falls apart. Yeah. 30 mega that go down, I've never seen that in my life before, you know? <laughs> Oh god. If Jordan, yeah, I mean, if Jordan, oh my god. Okay, can you take a second? You see where the two trebs are for Jordan that he's about to lose because he hates yep. trebs? Look to the left and look at that one treb for a second. Next to his oh castle. my god. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that, that is a very sad life. Oh. It, you could you could free it. You could treb cut with another <laughs> treb, but it's gonna take some teamwork, I think. I, you could tell that at one point he told that treb and a bunch of others to go to a castle. And we're like, don't trickle trep, but he actually gave it commands and it just couldn't move over there. Oh, uh, Siege Ram from Tato, though. Let's see how these Chakrams do against the Siege Ram. Yeah, so, so just to talk a little bit more about the Chakram Thrower, I, I think it's a great unit in general, by the way, but I just don't know if it's going to be the right unit against Mangada in general. Bring the stats, though, it's actually not so bad. So Chakram has six range, and Mangada has seven, and the range is the big deal when it comes to these units. Uh, because Chakram needs to be in range to fire, of course, and with the pass through damage, they do a lot of damage yeah. here. So maybe, maybe it is going to be a unit that solves some problems. We'll see how it plays out. Hand card now for Tato. Oof. Forgot yeah. that upgrade for a little bit there. I mean, we that we saw an, uh, like a really big example of it there, obviously. But I think if you yeah. get one solid volley off against the Mangadai, all the losses you'd taken over the previous couple minutes aren't that big a deal, right? Because you okay. can kill you can kill so many, but we are not gonna see Tato make that type of mistake again. Mm -hmm. Um I, what I like for Jordan though is that he's he's now pushing a different area. He defended this castle. He's now got three trebs here. And he'll start to actually take out the Mongol castles for once. Looking tough for Tato. We haven't seen Tato try and siege down Jordan in a long time. And despite that KD, still not a great spot. The Chakrams go in against the Mangadai here. Let's see. And great job from Tato. Split formation or spread yeah. formation. And it really minimizes the damage done. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's and the, the problem is these shotgun throwers, they look like a small unit, but they cost gold, guys. So losing these units uh, due to the mobility from the Magadai, that's going to hurt long term here for Jordan. Uh, Jordan does have a lot of stone in the bank. I'm, I'm wondering why we're not seeing castles in his economy or even more castles just to control the map here. Oh, geez. Oh, this could happen again. Era, the Chakrams, the, the Magadai have to run. And Tato's distracted with the raid in the corner. And I, I don't oh know if gosh. he can get out of here without losing most of these things. Look at the disco throwers go. It's a party. Dude, that's, that, that's, that's such disgusting. a sick unit, though. It's, that's such it's a sick disgusting. Unit. Yeah, you know, just just icing on the cake, you know, for the good jars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah as, if they, as if they don't have enough options. Yeah. The unique unit's actually just insane as well. Uh, but I think it's a really cool unit, uh, just how it looks and aesthetically. I, I love the disc thrower, not going to lie. Forward castle now from Jordan. Uh, we're going to see some Siege, though, from Tanto. He has got some Siege Ram already teched into, but it looks like he's switching it up for Manganel. Onagers could be the good counter for the Chakrams right now. But he's a long way from Onager at the moment. I, yeah, I mean, Jordan's eco setup's incredible. He hasn't been raided in a very long time. He now has the Treb number he needs. Tanto, it, the Mangadai aren't working. Uh, or at least he can't get more of them because he's lost castles, and he could lose another one, and I, I think... Even if Tato is able to get Siege out here, Jordan's got so much control, he could also make the Hussars, which are dirt cheap. I 
think Tato's score lead is going to slowly disappear here, and I, I think Jordan's going to be able to tie up this series the longer this goes. Maybe I'm assuming a lot. It's weird to say that at 190 pop versus 190 pop, but you don't have Mangadai. What do you do as Mongols, man? Yeah, it looks like it's going to be Drill coming out now for uh, for Tato, actually. So it's, it's going to be Siege, some form of Siege. But mm -hmm. Siege Ram will not work here, actually. Um, a Siege Ram are good if you catch Jordan off guard. But everything Jordan has kills Siege Ram. Remember, the Chakram Thrower deals melee damage. So it, it actually shreds Rams as well. Yep. Hisaro can obviously deal with Rams. Murder Holes comes in with Jordan. Something we don't talk about enough, I think. Um, Murder Holes is actually really good in this situation. It prevents, um, it prevents Tato from sitting under his castles, of course. Jordan defends with the Hussars in the right-ish. He's got a couple castles to save right now. He's actually saving both of them. And he does have Hussars in his eco. Now, good job from Tato to finally get some raids in here. But he's hoping that he can get some Onager shots on the Chakrams. Now, I've used Onager against Chakram before. Uh, it, it, it was a little painful. <laughs> uh, like, the Onager? Like, yeah, so, so in, my, in my situation, all right. Granted, I'm not Jordan. I'm not Tato. Uh, the Chakrams are able to take out Siege quite easily. Uh, yeah. And they just didn't... They weren't enough in the desperate situation that I fell into. Let's put it that way. Okay. And I fear for Tato that he is in a desperate situation now. With four on gold and one relic in the bank. The Siege is not going to come so easily. He's got Hussars to deal with at various areas of his eco. He needs the Onagers now. And those Chakrams are still amazing meat shield for those trebuchets. They're, they're just really strong. They're, they're, they have dude, they're great sick. DPS. Yeah, <laughs> they're this sick. Is insane. <laughs> and uh, Jordan I, says those units are so yeah. broken. So Jordan dude, I, I, accepts I think it. The best composition is actually like um, Hassar or Sharamsha Rider with, with Shackham Throwers now that I'm seeing this. Um, because you want that DPS unit from the back, and the Shackham is so good with, you know, mm -hmm. at, at accomplishing that role. Yeah. Two and a half thousand gold for Jordan. Like, hasn't spent as much food. Like, I also, the crazy thing is how many Hussars he's been able to produce when he's, he's never had like above like 50 farms. The crazy numbers of Hussars. About to have Jordan, 50 on the field. Jordan has 3,000 gold almost, just shy of. And he's got three relics in the bank compared to Tato's one. Going to late game, he's going to be even better. Yeah, I think this might be near the end for Tato. I'll be curious to see if we could see an Onager shot land. Right, because it's a low HP unit. It's 50 HP. So there we go. But now the cheap Hussars go in there. Jordan says no. Oh my god. Yeah. And this is going to be the game. Tato's population is dipped. It was amazing aggression at the start of Castle Age. And underwhelming at times from Jordan, possibly. But Jordan knew. If it got to this stage of the game, he would simply be able to outmass and outproduce and outtech, possibly, the Mongols. Um, yeah, there's a reason people ban the Civ. Yeah, and, and I just want to say one thing real quick before you know, people will obviously say this is a Civ win or whatnot. Guys, Tato had three bans. Gurjaras could have well yeah. just have been one of them, right? So like yeah. at the end of the day, no, no matter how balanced is or how bad you might think balance is, players have protection versus these civilizations. Um, and Tato deemed Gurjaras not ban worthy, and he paid the price with one game. Despite Tato playing really well, he goes down here. So one to one, and fair play. Yeah, I'm trying to think though. Is is it maybe a situation where Tato needed to have more success with ramming the sides? Because if you think back to game one, I know it was a different map. That was amazing for Tato. Um, he would show up with siege rams and hussars. Jordan would lose a side. Jordan would react, and Jordan would be able to push the middle. It felt like. Jordan's castles were very exposed next to Tato's walls and everything. And he just always had something there. I, I, I'm trying to think what Tato could have done differently. Obviously, he could have had more success with the Castle Age push. Mm. I mean, the, the, there was one window where I felt like, man, Jordan, he's really on the back foot. I, I never saw any siege from Tato, so maybe if you combine mm -hmm. that one moment with instead of just going for raids, because raids, really, realistically, you can't raid Gajara. They have camels and Shawarma riders that yeah, will chase maybe. you down. So maybe instead of that, focus on your death ball, get five traps, you know, 40, 50 Mangu die yep. before Shackham Throwers come out. That's probably the only kind of window you have, but, you know, um, at the end of the day, it's, it's going to be tricky for him. Yep. All right. Well, um, home map for Tato, I think his first home map pick was freaking Houseboat, man. Okay, so Arena Game 3, we have the desert version of Arena, just to hurt everyone's eyes. I, I like hate desert, that. yeah. I was going <laughs> to say, dude. Okay, fair enough. Um, and we've got Jordan playing as the Byzantines and then Tato playing as the Turks, which is so 
it's such a blast from the past. This was uh, a Civ matchup you would see back in like Masters of Arena 3 in 2015. But normally it's Burgundians, Bohemians, Poles, uh, those three, maybe Malay, Aztecs, you know, other Civs that come to mind. But what do you think, Kara? Yeah, like I, I mentioned this a little bit because we had Fortified Arena earlier, Fortified Clearing, of course. But um, it, the, the Arena meta, it's almost like it completely changed over the past two years uh, because of the new DLC civilizations. And I, I personally have this thought that because the meta changed, people forgot what the meta was with the old civilizations. And so what they would do is they're going to now resort to the comfort picks that they had with the old civilizations. Um, that's at least my take on it. Uh, but of course, in this situation, Turks and Byzantines are both classic, classic civilizations. And they've been good on Arena for a long time now. Uh, but it feels like to me on paper that Byzantine do have a little bit more options than what Turks have, but Turks have much more power. So flexibility versus power, and it's a pretty nice matchup to see uh, on a map like Arena, I think. Okay, so everyone's favorite pastime. We have to look at this mini-map and talk about what it looks like. I am very conflicted. I feel like you've got some... It's clearly a person, because you've got the eyes on the mini-map with the wood lines there. And then they've got, like, a weird hat on. Okay, that's where I'm at right now. Feel free to fill in the blanks. Could could possibly say that this individual has like arms near the south of Tato's base. You know, um, you know Tina, this sounds really fun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a five minute break. I'm gonna <laughs> you knock yourself out of this. But I actually need to take a break though. I'll be right back. Yeah, feel free. Um, Continue talking. What no, it's like, all right. Though? You just would have ruined this whole process, anyways. Um, I, I'm, I'm really not creative. You know me. All right, be right back. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like I was initially thinking. I'm so conflicted. I actually did a bit of Googling as Hare was talking about Byzantines and Turks and power spikes. I was actually Googling various things that I thought it could look like. Saxophone? Kind of. I mean, if your saxophone's having a baby, maybe. It could be the pregnant seahorse we saw earlier. Chef's hat? I, that's what I thought. And I was initially thinking Pillsbury Doughboy, if you know what that is. But I Googled it. Doesn't really match. It's a chakram blade. I don't know. Not seeing it. Um, all right, so map-wise, we've got the main gold and the stone. That's completely fine for Tato. Bit of a weird woodline generation here, to be honest, in the back. Um, secondary gold also very far back, but that's going to be the same for Jordan. Uh, it should be consistent if one person has two golds in the base. The other one will as well. I, I, so a bit of history on how Arena used to be played. So that tournament I mentioned back in 2015... It had interesting Civ settings, which I quite liked. So we didn't have as many Civs back then. But you'd have, like, every game would have a choice of, I think it was three civilizations you could pick from. So there would be situations where sometimes you would have mirror matchups. But some of this has actually stuck with me. So I think the one game was, like, Japanese, Saracens, Byzantines. Yeah, I think that's it. From seven and a half years ago, I think that's it. Japanese... Saracens, Byzantines, and what we would always see is just some like crazy arbalest or monk play. Um, and then there was also I think Spanish Goths, and then like Vikings or something. It was always this interesting triangle where if you pick one sieve, there could be another sieve on the other side that would counter you. Um, but anywho, so I as I was thinking through that, I was thinking maybe Byzantines and Turks were together. No, and yes, people, it is very uh, it's a very historical matchup. Um, Dude, what's the year that I should remember here? Like 1418, 1415, something like that. Um, I'm going to imagine we're going to see Turks play standard here. I think we're going to see scouts, which will eventually turn into light cav for free as the Turks. Um, Tata will compete for relics, and I, I agree with Hera that I think Turks have the greatest peak where they can go for the cav archers and the hussars. 1453, it's the same thing. That's basically what I said. Uh, and then Byzantines... Honestly, probably just a whole bunch of trash units uh, would make sense, right? Skirmishers for the Cav Archers, maybe some Albs and Pikes for the Hussars. But uh, a lot on the line for both players here. Obviously, moving on gives you a big jump in prize pool. Uh, winner here will play Hera tomorrow in a quarter. But then you also have the potential to win a ticket to Red Bull Wolo in Germany in October. Uh, something that Tato already has, but Jordan does not. So, is Hera gone? Yeah, he got sick of me. Uh, he'll be back soon. I'm sure he's uh, going to be back. No problem. Hey, 
There's one thing I know about Hera, though. He's really missing this Arena Dark Age. Because it's one of the most exciting times for him, so. Oh, that would have been the perfect time for him to come back. I was like, I set it up. I was trying to do the math in my head on how long it would take him to come back. Sadly, we're not going to see Janissaries for Tato. I was thinking maybe Janissary play would come back here, but the lower eco, high aggression stuff doesn't work on Arena as much these days. And as expected, we have the barracks there for Tato. Tato will then follow that up with a stable and then eventually a blacksmith and the scouts like I mentioned. Uh, the bigger question, though, is if Jordan will try and do the same thing. You have no immediate bonuses there with Byzantine. But you also don't want to give up full control over the map with relics. And we saw uh, Spearman earlier. Uh, Catwatch against Velez. He went for eight Spearmen and only got one relic. So MBL and I established, and MBL's the master arena strategist, we all know, that going only Spearman isn't really the one of the best plays here. Um, is allowing Mirror as a Civ pick something you've considered for your events? In the past, yes. These days, no. Uh, I did that in Hidden, like, I think Hidden Cup 2, because I didn't want to take away from someone strategizing something. Like, if you strategize a certain strategy, I wanted you to be able to execute on that. But... What do we have, 42 civilizations? I feel like it's kind of a waste to do that. And if the reasoning for doing that is that, you know, it's more fair, I think the devs should be able to balance things out where there's always civilizations that can compete. And for the most part, that's the case. Obviously, for like three to six months, every time there's a DLC, things go haywire. <clears throat> uh, not that that's happened recently. But and again, we implement bands as well, right? So we have three global bands per each player. Uh, so six civilizations were banned out, whereas the group stage didn't have that. So if you don't like a civilization, just simply ban it out. I think having three global bans per player is, is pretty good for fairness sake. All right. Yeah, and I don't think the devs are going to take your suggestion of adding a uh, an American Civ and having Cobra Car be the unique unit. But after watching the Gurjaras in the previous game, you know, maybe anything's possible. So, cheaper Imperial Age for Byzantines, cheaper trash for Byzantines. Basically, everything is very cheap as a whole. But if this gets to a situation where we have both civilizations at peak performance, I think the Turks do win out. Jordan's going to go for the Spearman play. Feels like he has to compete. I almost... Let me look at the draft real quick again. Okay, so Jordan has... He played Mayans, Gurjars. He has Aztecs, Malay, Byzantines, Britons. I'm very surprised he actually picked Byzantine. He might have plans to pick Britons on another map, but I, I would have liked to maybe see Britons if he's expecting Turks. And last year, people were going for Malay a lot on Arena as well, but I think he was maybe saving that for an eventual houseboat. Sorry about that. I am back. You're good. You're All good. Right. Thanks for filling the time. What did I miss? Nothing? Well... Uh, not, not too much, just talking through the possibilities. I am curious, though, on your thoughts on the Spearman play to contest for Relics, as opposed oh, yeah. to going for, like, you know, scouts as well. Yeah, it's so interesting, because I just watched the game, actually. I don't know if you, you, you were probably casting, actually, today. Uh, the Bohemian player, I think it was Kapach, who went yep. for Spears, and it looked so bad against the Light Cap, just because the Light Cap are two-shotting the Monks, and the Spears just can't get enough DPS to protect the Monks. So I personally prefer the Light Cap... Uh, a lot, especially after seeing a game like that. Yep, no, I agree. Yeah, that, that's my feeling. Uh, I told MBL, I was casting that set with him, I said, honestly, against Burgundians, maybe your best bet is just to not even contest for Relics. It sounds bad, but just go straight Oof. 3TC boom and try and kill an early imp. Um, I've seen you one too many instances where people are trying to go Spearman, and they only end up with one Relic, and it just it just doesn't feel worth it for me. But it is you know, I actually... I thought of that, but then I called myself like, you know, uh, I said like, that, that that makes no sense because then you just give five relics for free to Burgundians. But I literally thought that uh, yeah. earlier, so I'm kind of interesting to see you also say that. I, just, I don't know if that's going to work though. Five relics almost seems too much advantage for Burgundians. I, I personally think they might just be the best of Undisputed um, on Arena and, and that just might be like the place they are. Like you, because if you fight them for the relics, what happens is whether you get the relics or not, they get more time in which their eco gets kick in and you're you know you're not on extra tcs right now so your exactly. economy is much weaker um and then if you lose the relics obviously it's a disaster if you win it then they have the economy advantage 
Um, but, but as it's, a it's whole, a really though, like let's say let's say it's not Burgundians, all right? Like in this mm -hmm. matchup, would you go scouts in Jordan's position, or would you still try and go Spearman? Because he has nothing really besides that scout there to contest as Tato. Oh, that's that's smart. Healing up there, nice play, Jordan. But you have nothing really to contest the monks, I guess is my point. Yeah, I almost feel like you have to go scouts and spearmen. Um, just a good classic Arabia scout rush, and it's a very, it's a very costly investment. But that might be what you need to do to handle Burgundians and try to deny them all five relics, or at least four of them, uh, and take for yourself. That that might be yeah. the best approach. But it, but I, I definitely agree with you that just spearmen. It, I'm not saying it's never gonna work, but it just feels very hard to make work here. But like, let's see what Jordan has in store for us. I'm surprised that Monk didn't die, actually. It looked like the second hit came in. But yeah, like this is a good example. Like Good players are just going to run away. Mm -hmm. And then if you try and run in, you're just going to lose your Spearman to conversions, and the Monk doesn't have to be scared. So here we go again. Another Monk's going to go down. And I so I know that you played in the group stage. I obviously cast a ton of the group stage. It felt like at least one player, a series, was trying to do the just Spearman thing. And mm -hmm. I think it's sad for the arena meta that it's like you have to go scouts and you have to go light cap. Otherwise, it's bad. But Tato's showing, at least so far, wow. why we're not like super impressed with how this plays out. But, but I mean, look at this. And Tato can do this every single time. Like It's obviously very impressive that you know Tato pulling this off. But the, player, this, the players of this caliber, guys, they can pull this off very consistently. And Tato's obviously going to be one of the best at doing it. Really fast heal speed, though, from the Byzantine monks. Holy moly. Yeah, so Tato will have four relics guaranteed, uh, potentially a fifth. The KD's five to one. I mean, I guess the positive is your spearmen are cheaper if you're Byzantines, but honestly, couldn't you have just gotten the one relic that he's about to get now? Isn't that a freebie potentially anyways, even if you don't make spearmen? <laughs> Maybe? You just go grab one relic? You yeah. You forget about contesting it. You grab one relic, and then you just chill. I yeah, mean... maybe. I, it's I don't better know. than this outcome, that's for sure. This is the worst case scenario. We can all, we yeah. can all agree on that. You know, like go, investing into relics and not get any, that, that's almost GG. That's like going for a big all-in push, like a tower rush on Arabia and losing all your villages instantly. That's kind of how it is. Well, 4th um, TC for Jordan. Normally, I think the 4th TC at this time would, would bother me, but I guess you do have that cheaper imp that you could still uh, work with here. So you add the 4th TC for a big boom when you don't have the late game advantage with the relics. That could hurt you, but if imp is so much cheaper, your imp time might not suffer too much. Uh, what do you what do you think about unit comps? Like my thought right now is is Hussar, Bombard Cannon, and Cav Archer from Turks. That obviously takes a long time. For Byzantines, I was talking while you were gone, maybe trash, mm -hmm. like siege, and you try and just push, like siege, yeah, maybe. Uh, just before I answer that, uh, what time are you at? Because I think I rewinded by accident. Oh, um, I'm at I'm at twenty two thirty five right now. Okay, I'm going to speed up a little bit, catch up to you at 40. All right, perfect. Uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, as far as compositions goes, um, <clears throat> I think that Byzantine uh, is very, very flexible, and they can respond with anything. But I think Turks will most likely, since it's a boom game established already, it's going to be Hussar Cav Archers is the best comp by far for them, with Siege Ram as the Siege plus Bomber Cannon options. Um, but Byzantine, they can do a lot of things. They can either go the route of um, Camel Skirm, or they can go for like Halb, Skirm, Monk, Siege, and go for like yeah. a little bit more of like a Death Ball, which um, I think is slightly better because Camels have a lot of weaknesses inherently. Yeah, we'll see. Now there's four TCs pumping currently for Jordan, and there's only two for Tato because his third is imping. So this imp time is actually very... Um, I don't know if it's bad because it will give him a lot of map control and getting chemistry for free, us are all that will really allow you to push. Mm -hmm. But it will mean he drops off with the Vill count. Now, I, I think there's been a trend when a civilization has the lead with the relics, let's say, or the civ advantage, where there's this little push, whether it's a couple Meganels, a couple extra light cap, just anything to secure the middle of the map. And I'm loving that. Like I think that's so smart. If there's one thing I've learned from TTL Arena, mm -hmm. it's just hold the map. Even if you're going to lose whatever you send out there, just hold the map for as long as you can. Force them into that back corner, and the longer they're back there, the more you're benefiting from all the relics. Yeah, I was talking about that as well. It's like on Arena, space is actually a resource. It's it's one of the more important commodities that you can have on a map because um, you know space lets you make production buildings, houses, farms, town centers. There's so many things you need that you, you're, the space inside your walls is actually just not enough, simply speaking. So mm -hmm. uh, the map control ends up being very important, in, not not only for the resources out there, but just for the space itself here. Um, we're seeing a tournament from uh, Jordan, by the way. So it looks like he wants to go into some sort of monk-focused composition. So monk plus trash units almost seems like the way to go for him. Uh, Imperial Age for Tato, though. Where's Jordan? 
Yeah, Jordan, he added the fourth TC, right? He added the fourth town center. Also, at this point, uh, he's going to start converting Tato's monks, and Tato has to run. But um, he doesn't have a market. Oh, no, uh, he does have a market. He's just not using the market, which is really weird. Mm -hmm. But you see what I mean? Like, it's just one ram, and then what, what I've seen in the past is players will make, like, two more barracks right away. It's like they, they feel the need to react immediately. But Tato's going to donate his spearmen. These would be the only Byzantine spearmen that don't get upgraded to pikemen, and they're going to be really lonely. <laughs> <laughs> do you go inside yeah you probably can't go inside don't let the historic <laughs> in here um yeah so one of the big things here like for turks is that they get a lot of spike right off the bat here you can see chemistry instant, instant research bomber cannon already coming out from tato and um and yeah he's gonna be attacking into cow archers uh, as his main uh, unit here you don't need a lot of villagers to afford the early empower spike for turks because like i said it's mainly siege um and now we're gonna see jordan into defensive options fortified wall coming up and maybe even more layers behind it as well Look at that castle. What does this remind you of? It reminds me of the first, the first game. game. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I mean, the difference is all the pushes through the middle, so it's a very different result possibly. But yeah, he just he knows he needs to keep it up. Uh, I don't think there's a chance that he will lose his MTC, especially with fortified wall just now completing. Shout out to Byzantine fortified walls, by the way. They look really cool. I have a lot of HP as well. Yeah, yep. super badass. Yeah. Also, atonement being in is just such a weird talking point right now. They're just both all these holy men are just switching sides, and they're all very confused. Yeah, it seems like some really compelling arguments, but they don't last a long time. Like there's <laughs> yeah. always something else that comes up. Um, yeah, as they're both, as all the monks are dying, they're both like, "You were right. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have switched sides." <laughs> or, yeah. Who oh knows? My God. So, yeah. stables for Jordan? Is he going to go camel here? It looks like it. Yeah, yeah, it was one option I mentioned, but the thing about the camels, right, is that it seems like a great counter to cavalry, but versus cavalry archer, it's almost like a trap because the camel wins up close, but getting up close can be difficult at times. Uh, and the camel is actually not tanky at all. It's very, very squishy, in fact. Yeah. So, it's not exactly a direct counter to heavy cav archer, but hold on, let's see. Byzantine camel is very cheap, of course, and uh, Jordan will be committing into that for the time being. You know, the worst part about this is how he went four TCs, and now he can only take advantage of one of his gold spots. He's got all yeah. this, all these villagers, but he can't really take gold right now, except for that back TC. And Tato doesn't have a lot of army. It's not like Tato has, like, you know, like the, the economy lead or anything like that. Yeah. It's like just like that, that tech that lets you get in, and Tato can take the relic. Oh, my God. <laughs> Love yeah. it. Go it's grab that. Snag it, Tato. Let's go. Be quick about it, buddy. Tell what happened to your friends. There you go. Yeah, I was just going to say, the, the one monk gets the prize at the end, the one who survived. Kind of taking the long way around, though. Kind of confident. going to okay. take so long here. Also, heavy cab archers also in. These things are getting melted. Dude, one shot with no armor. And it's not. things are not going to change. Heavy camels in, they're still getting one shot. It's not even a lot of C8, it's like 17. Yeah. And, and the camels are getting melted. And now Tato knows that he just needs more CA, right? It's, yep. it's not a big rush. So Jordan, very ambitious castle. I don't know if he's sending bills yet, but like that castle in the middle of the map, kind of doubt that one's going to work. But yeah, that, that's, that's very ambitious. He would, he would need more camels, right? And he at least recognizes yeah. that. And I think sometimes you place those castles if you're you realize this next fight has to be it for you. Yeah. Say, like, I have to do it, and then if that happens, then I want a good castle spot so I can take whatever resource that is. But kind of underwhelming, man. Like, I, I talked about Jordan's draft while you were gone. He's got Britons, yeah. Malay. I know he probably wants Malay for a uh, houseboat or something, but I don't know. Like, I, I don't know what on earth his plan was here with Byzantines. Uh, Byzantine is a good arena sieve, but not, they're not a full boom sieve. They're like an early imp sieve. If yeah. That's what I think, Ooh, at least. That's all. Big fight, though, yeah. That needs to back away. He might lose his bomber cannons. I, I think Tato just expected to push back whatever Jordan had. No problem. But you still need to hit and run. And so that's what he's doing. Also, does not have Sapahi yet, so he doesn't have 100 HP, which could make a bit of a difference. Jordan will actually get that castle up, and Jordan's like, hey, what's up? I'm Byzantines, and actually not too bad for Jordan. Yeah, so Jordan buys himself. So you might see a lot of camels go down here, but these are very cheap. Byzantine camel, of course, is very cheap. He's, he's, he's getting back the space. 
and he's getting time. Right now, time can get him into an elite skirmisher transition, which kind of completes his composition a little bit. Um, but it's, he's obviously a long way from that area. Yeah. They're looking rough though. The, the, the cavalrys are almost untouchable once they uh, once they back up here. Yeah, I think at this point, Tato needs to foresee a skirmisher switch. I think 40 is the number. Uh, obviously, you can't be perfect with it, but 40 cab archers, and then maybe you add the stables. Uh, unless you disagree. Uh, maybe you think, like, 80 cab archers is the way. <laughs> no, no, no. No, 40 is great. Yeah, yeah no, no. Dude, you need to get the Hissar as soon as possible right now because in more cab archers, you're just waiting to get countered. So definitely, you want to complete the composition more than the power unit. And everyone agrees. Me, you, and the Tato here. Stables coming down on the front there. Perfect. Camel, uh, though. Oh, but hold on. Heavy camel. I, I kind of like it. I yeah. like it too. Yeah, because yeah. You're, you're not losing your gold units right now. And yeah. so you're going to have the gold floating. You're going to have all five relics. So you don't have to feel bad about spending gold on it. And your camels are actually stronger than the Byzantine camels. But you are paying full price, which is the trade-off. And obviously having some camels, maybe with a mix of hustlers as well, is always good against the skirms. So... Um, I think the camel switch coming in before Jordan shows up with fully upgraded elite skirm is the biggest talking point right now. Jordan's just adding the ranges, just now getting fletching and ballistics. It's still going to take him a long time. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the thing, actually. Like, you know, when, when we consider how, how cheap the options for Byzantine are, it still takes a long time to get there with tech and all the upgrades you need to actually go into these counter units. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that time, your opponent is, is, is kind of stockpiling an unstoppable force that even counter units will have trouble you know, taking out. Look at Jordan um, <laughs> trying yeah, to what delay the, hell the castle that? foundation. That's actually amazing. He's on top of the foundation. Tato has to back away it's for dude, now. I, I <laughs> can't believe that worked. There's so many camels <laughs> on the field here. Holy moly. Yeah, he's got 60 of them. Tato can't get anywhere near these fights right now. And I think adding his own camel was good. But he just needs to make sure that castle foundation isn't actually uh, being Wait, built right hold now. Hold on. Dude, no, hold on. Tato's losing a lot right now. Oh my god, Why this is, is a big I, swing. I would have backed up into my base if I were Tato. But... Uh, I don't know, like, there was definitely a moment where Jordan agreed with you there. He's like, oh, this is really good for me. Yeah. Don't you dare call me nerd after this anymore, <laughs> Sistato. <laughs> uh, kind of true. That was as nerdy as they get, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I think it's a first where I've seen someone dodging shots, but also blocking a castle foundation. Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen that myself. Never attempted it either. Uh, Tato, he wants the castle there. He's not moving it, by the way. He, yeah, he yeah, wants true. It yeah, don't right delete the foundation, there. Tato. Just keep going. Uh, there you go. Okay, okay, he conceded. Yep. I'd love to see a bunch of individual stone walls for the cab archers to sit in right now. Maybe that's too much, but I feel like mm. having an additional choke could be really nice. God, these camels are insane. I take it back. Byzantines are beastly, man. I take it back. Dude. Uh, the AM team, I, I, I wish Hart was here, but we have a thing where like we think Byzantine Camel are like insane. Like it doesn't even, it's not even about the math behind it. They're just they're much better than what they seem. And if you don't, you, like, don't think about it. They're just insane, okay? Yeah. And this is what I'm talking about. Like, it, on, on paper, it's just it, they get shredded too fast. But in practice, you can just spam them, and they get so much done here. So, really impressive from Jordan how he's managed to even crawl out of the the, the tiny area he was in before to now have map control. Yeah, well and he, he, has lots, he has lots of gold for the time being. Also, Tato needs to delete that. Well, maybe don't delete the castle, actually, because it's a 95%. But just complete the castle to say you completed it on the end game statistics or something. Um, <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah, I mean, that was just for the stats. <laughs> get masonry after the castle goes down. Uh, okay, so let's look. So I'm looking at Tato's gold. Keep in mind, Tato's made only gold units. He has oh. made zero trash units. He has zero discounts. He's got 26 cab archers. He's got 19 camels. Jordan has 50 camels with 37 on gold. And finally, Jordan's going with four treps. So I think Jordan can actually push this back. I, I can't believe I'm saying it after how bad it looked earlier. But this is wild. Five, man. five relics for Turks. Like, there's no way they lose this, right? Like on paper. But holy moly, what we're seeing Jordan accomplishing right now in this game is just fantastic. Oh, finally, Stipahi comes in, gives Turks cab archers an extra 20 HP for those who don't know. Um, that's really the big the big upgrade for Turks. Makes the camera very strong. Big battle here, though. Yeah, Bomber Cannons will have 12 range. Tato also got Artillery. So he's he's like fully teched as far as Turks are concerned in the Imperial Age in a moment. His camels do melt away, but it seems like a reasonable trade if he's got more camels coming. 
He will lose his Bombard Cannons, though. And Jordan's got Skirms in Q. Now, he doesn't have many more Camels. And he also was really late with the lead skirm, which makes me so sad because those things are super ineffective right now. Dude, regular skirms look so trash. Like they, they, they look. It looks like a feudal hey, age unit. Like, be careful. The Turks are here. Okay, we don't want to insult the Turks. I, that, that is true. He does have five relics yeah. on us. He, he kind of controls the economy right now. But dude, it, it's just such a weak unit. But even though it's like the stats from lead skirm isn't actually that insane, but it just it makes the it makes the unit just look much more powerful, much more scary. I think Tato is missing a few production buildings right now. He's on three ranges, which seems slow to me. Yeah, true. He's on four, five stables, I guess. So if he was like eight stables, six ranges, eight and eight, I feel a little bit better about it. Uh, that's what Jordan has working for him. Jordan's got six ranges. Jordan's got 10 stables. So Jordan's reinforcements are a lot faster. So he is on some type of clock here as he slowly runs out of gold. Yeah. I've got MBL in the chat here, by the way. He's saying that uh, Tato should have done bomber cannons or bomber towers years ago. He says, and yeah, dude, I, I agree. agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, bomber you better agree after insane. you faced up against that MBL in that like eight-hour-long game on Arena, yeah. and the bomber yeah. towers are everywhere. <laughs> oh no, dude! He bomber towers rushes me every like once a week, bro. It's yeah. a regular thing. He's Don't the worry. only he's the only player who really does that, to be honest. Yep. Um, it's it's one of and, the, the things that underrated. makes MBL MBL. Yeah, yeah, it's it's actually good. Like normally I'm insulting MBL's gameplay until it beats me, but with Bomber Tower I give it respect up front. You know what I mean? Uh, it's actually underrated. I think he he makes really good use of that. I think other players sleep on it, uh, mm -hmm. but finally the scrims coming forward here to deal with the cavalrys plus the camels behind. Big fights on the front right now. But Tato needs his stone to repair his castle right now. It, the thing is though, there's not a big buffer for those skirmishers, and those skirmishers will die quite quickly here. Tato's camel numbers are, are decent enough, but it's gone full Hussar now, and the Skirms will melt, and Jordan, I, I'm looking at his golden come, and it's all in the middle of the map, and I don't know if there's a time window where he could also get into Hal. He would have had to have that one prepped. He'll lose one Treb, he'll lose the second Treb. But Tato's still holding on, 300 kills for him, 202 units lost. This is a sick game. Oh, uh, Halb is so hard to get you, dude. It, it's kind of a trap because you want to go for it when you have no gold, but the upgrade costs 600 gold, and that's yeah. just the Halb with your upgrade. Uh, it's kind of a trap there, but let's see. I mean, Jordan gets that castle up. He has a lot of stone as well. He could sell some of that. He is, in fact, doing that. The price is not too bad. Halb upgrade can come in, and that's going to be a great buffer. Um, so Halb Skirm might be the, the next composition to go into here. Yeah, uh, potentially. I mean, you, you do have that problem where the Cav Archers will clean up the Halbs no problem. And I think the camels is what has given uh, Jordan success here. And if, if you start to see lower camel numbers, you're going to start to realize that this could be the end for Jordan. I mean, he is Byzantine. It's just Jordan three just barracks. Ate Tato, by the way, right there. Like, he just ate 20 units on my screen. Yeah, yeah. That was crazy. 150 population versus 180. Those cav archers have 106 kills, 107 now. I'm sure it's going to climb as the halbs come forward. And it's much easier to micro uh, Cav Archers and Hussars as opposed to like Halb Skirm. Yeah. It's Even Halb I mean, Skirm Camo just makes it harder as well. Yeah, like it's, 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 it's really, really awkward. awkward. And okay. that's the thing with counter units. Like it, ca compositions are not about like one unit counters this unit. It's about the composition being better than the other one. And in this case, Jordan needs to make sure his Skirms are hitting the Cav Archers and his Halbs are hitting the Hussar. If yep. it's the other way around, it's not going to work. Yep. It's tricky. And, and again, mm -hmm. you're on the clock. That's a big thing to hear, too. I think it's a little different if Jordan has two relics. But with zero relics and all this gold being forward right now, like, that's the only gold income he has. That's where the concern comes in. And look at those skirms. Look how many skirms have to die to get a volley off against the cab archers there. Bro, I was just going to say, you know what Tato should have done? Not camels. She went champions. <laughs> against That's the nuts. But okay, yeah. yeah, but but then he already has camel upgrades and he has castles, so he could mix in cataphracts. So uh, I think that's okay though. Maybe. I, I love the production from Jordan. Again for Tato, he's still working off of three ranges, which really bothers me. Jordan's castle will stand, and that trash full is no joke here. We might get to a point where <clears throat> this honest okay. I, I probably shouldn't say this because I could speak it into reality, but this game could go on for like another hour because Byzantines can spam when there's no gold and Tato has gold, but his comp is kind of stuck yeah, <laughs> for yeah. now. Like he can't, he could actually consider champion at, at some point. 
Yeah. <clears throat> I think I think champion is very necessary. Sorry, I'm losing my voice a little bit. You're good. Sorry you're good. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I think I think champion is going to be the uh, the big the big switch here. Uh, he just needs to time it right because it's it's a long it's a long transition. Yeah, you wanna. I think what you do is you get the buildings up, and you get fully teched before you even show them, because you don't want to yeah. waste population space and have twenty to thirty units that aren't upgraded as you're masking it too early. Running around with like men at arms and stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's not that's not gonna be too good. Yeah, yeah, I highly agree with that. But I mean, considering Tato was very hesitant to add more ranges, I guess at this point he doesn't need. He's got fifty four cav archers, so. We'll see if he ends up mixing in the barracks. I'm sure we'll see it. Uh, love how the Hussars are just running back and forth. Obviously, they get melted by the Camels and the Halves, but it's just to allow the Cav Archers to do their thing. The king of that is Viper. He does that so well. Yep. Just runs the melee units around. You don't even fight with them. You just run them around and let the range units do the DPS. Grab against counter units. Look at the look at the Trebs here for Jordan. This We are at the final all for gold units in Jordan's base. He's got uh, 300 more gold to mine. He's got 400 in the bank. Feels like if it doesn't happen soon, if he doesn't take this castle out in a moment, he might never take it out. But Tato doesn't have stone, and Tato isn't exactly repairing this either. This is what Keep I mean, out. man. Like, th if this castle goes down, this could go on for a while. But then again, if the castle goes down, Jordan might be full of confidence and momentum to push the whole game. Tato has no resources, and one thing I didn't mention, I wanted to talk about it before, but I didn't quite get the chance. Tato was sitting on 120 bills the entire time. This is good because you get a lot of military, but it's also not good because you don't stockpile any resources. Yeah, so yeah, bad true. things are happening. If you start taking bad fights, you don't actually have that backbone, that economy. Like over 30 minutes, if you have an extra 20 villagers, that's gathering you a lot of resources that kind of stockpile and Ooh, help you out no these way. kind of times. Left side, Jordan's base. I think there's a, there's there's a, a hole, hole there. Yeah, yeah. There's a hole. I saw and it the earlier. Hussars are going to run in. This, this is going to get nuts, Hera, because Jordan's going to lose 20 vils, and he's got 20 more unit military units in queue. So that it, one castle from, from Jordan helping a lot, though. Oh, that castle true. from way from way long ago. Camels as well to react. Wow, making the best out of a bad situation. There's Jordan. Yeah, halbs and skirms are on the CA. I, I, I guess a lot of cav archers go down, but also skirmishers will as well because hussars will arrive. Um, you have a little siege ram push on the right. For Tato, uh, Hussars are in, still in the back. This is still crazy. It's 180 pop, but there's zero on gold for both players. So it is simply relic gold right now and the little bit of gold on the right. I think it's worth it for both players to maybe send some bills out there, but nothing too crazy. It, it, it's so interesting. This is one of the... This one, I personally love late game, by the way. A lot of people might find it a little bit tedious, but I personally love late game. And this one, one of the more interesting late games I've ever seen because five relics for a gold heavy comp like Turks yep. versus Byzantine with nothing, you know, no relics, but they don't really mind because they're happy spamming trash here. Hassar is running for the trebuchets. Can they find any kills? It's worth it just for one, I think. Yeah, Even for just sure. one, and he gets it. I mean, it was, it was expensive in terms of the amount of horses lost, but you don't have to worry about that in this game. 75 actually, farms right now for Tato. It's getting to that critical mass, like 70, 80 farms. He's adding more stables. Because he loses the Hussars so fast, so he always has to have them replenishing. Yeah. Dude, Jordan, Jordan, Jordan's running though. in with the scrims. This is sick. He's running in with the scrims so deep and just letting the Halbs deal with the Hussar. But it's the Siege Ram that forces him back. Look at yeah. that. It's the Siege Ram that forces him back. Wow. I love how Tato's taking the remaining gold on the right. He'll probably lose those units, but every little bit counts there. Mm -hmm. I, I'm still going to continue to keep an eye on all gold units. So you've got 39 cab archers for Tato. And he's got rams, obviously. I like the idea of trying to ram push, but I think you'd still, you still have to be careful that Jordan doesn't get a main push down through the center. I, I think it's it's much it's much better. And I see Jordan taking it to Siege Ram. It's much better for Tato to not care about rams right now. I think, I think the rams are a little bit of a bait for Tato. And for Jordan, I don't think he can afford rams. So in my opinion, mm. both players should not be making rams right now. It should be bombard cannon for Tato, and for uh, Jordan, it should be trapped. That's my that's my take on the situation right now. I don't think Tato really has space for the barracks, by the way, if he wants to go. For at what? the back, eh? yeah. yeah. Look at look at the space. It's all farms. Also, if you're gonna ram rush in on the left side, you're gonna run right into a castle. Jordan is wisely sending most of his lumberjacks to the north, or like the it's right area, side of the yeah. base. Fortified wall for Tato. He he is very concerned. And Siege Ram from Jordan will bust right in. Remember, the relics aren't far away. There's also Trebs there to take out the ranges. 
Quite a few cab archers are going down for Tato as Jordan continues his push. And now Tato's going to break through at the same time. That's a big ball there of cab archers and hussars. So difficult. I think Jordan is about to take the score lead, by the way. Tato, he's running the relics back. He's taking the relics from the front <laughs> monastery. He's running the back. His, his base has been opened up right now from the siege ramp from Jordan. They're going straight into his base here. And Tato now has to make something from this forward attack or else he's in a lot of trouble. I, I don't like the Uniq for Tato at the moment. It, it, there's, there's just endless skirms and endless helps for Jordan. But for Tato, his units are more expensive. Even with the relics. If he wow. could take out the Trebs, maybe. But my goodness, I, I think it's the production buildings from Jordan. Constant pressure, having one or two trebuchets all the time. What a difference this is making for him. Great game from both players. This uh, is honestly, sick. Not a lot of mistakes in this late game, guys. Both players played pretty damn well and, and showed some really interesting uh, options here. And it's still so close. I mean, the relics go down for Tato, but he, you know, he still has control of them. He clears the push on the front now, forces the rams back, or sorry, the trebs back with mm -hmm. a ram. Might be able to snipe those trebuchets as well. This honestly could also be at a point where, like, we have to pay attention to the market prices because I'm sure Jordan's been selling a lot and it's been popping yeah. up on my screen, but I'm looking now and it's, it's 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 all the way down. To sell food and wood, it's only 17 return if you have guilds. Wait, is that before or after guilds? No, that's after, that's after guilds. guilds. Yeah, 17. Is it, 14 it before, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. That's actually interesting that Tata research guilds. Um, you, yeah, you, you think he, he's not the one to need it, but it's the kind of thing where he has five relics, so he's just trying to set up as best as, best as possible mm -hmm. for late yep. game, I think. Um, I, again, this I, game's going to go on for a while longer. <laughs> but I think a, a big thing that is going to make this life so difficult for Tato is the fact that Jordan has Byzantine castles up. I just don't see a world where Tato can easily take out those castles. And the goal for Jordan is just going to be taking out production buildings, which is a lot easier. Yep. Also, is it's, there a it's hole? So crazy. Are those hustlers going to get in? <gasps> oh, if they were to get into the oh, back wow. corner, that'd be so annoying. But what? What? Oh, I guess he clicked them to the left. Yeah, Tato keeps waiting the same side where he knows the castle's on. It's yeah. so unnatural. Go to the other side, right? That's what any anyone who's paying attention would do, but maybe he's not paying too much attention. There's a lot of things going on here. Mm -hmm. um, as Jordan is on the woodland to the left-hand side with some halberdiers as well now. This is just messy. Messy late game. Jordan accidentally queuing up militia, which is actually quite expensive at this point. The most expensive militia ever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Like 20 <laughs> gold? You sure about that purchase, bro? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Where even are they? Yeah, production yeah, yeah, buildings finally. are important here. The Hussars make it to the back, but they'll be dealt with. Okay, but Jordan is now at 90 eco, which means he has space with 70 trash units in queue to have 110 army with rams. Yep. I don't know. Like, Tato, I think, has done the right thing to have 130 eco, because as you said, you bank resources. You need to, yeah, yeah. But I, he's, the opponent's got counter units, and it's double the amount of army. This could end the game right here. I mean, that that's the trade-off. Like, it, it's a harder comp for for, for Jordan to play. L look at what Tato's doing. He's just pulling back the Hussar. It, it's really easy for for Tato to play this, but easy doesn't mean necessarily better. And Jordan pushes in with the skirmishers. He needs to get the help to defend the skirms and the skirms and the cavalchers. But look at this. Wow. I and mean, look at the play that Tato's doing. Yep. That was that was very good micro. And, and Jordan, I think, kind of took the bait. He never pulled any of his helps back there. Yeah. He still does have more reinforcements, though. I mean, I mean, the Q is insane. He's got 70 halves in Q. But I honestly, I think if his skirmisher number is something he focuses on, the halves will go down as quickly as they create. Mm -hmm. I don't know you, if that you statement's need a perfect true, balance. I don't even know if no, that no, statement's no. true. I, I'm just looking. I feel like I'm watching goths right now. This spam is nuts. This is why people love the Byzantines in late game. Yep. This is why I hate playing the Byzantines in late game. It's painful. You've done everything right. You have all the relics. You have a thousand kills and you have 700 deaths. What more could you really ask for if you're Tato? Like, Tato's even bringing the relics back. He's doing everything that 90% of the players would be too lazy to do. Yeah. And he's still in this position. Like, just just to let it sink in, there's been, like, like Tina is saying here, like, there's no mistakes. I see a militia. I found him. He's on the left hand side. <laughs> he's he's Track the, the militia. Where's Waldo? <laughs> there he is. Yeah. I have another comment from MBL. Sorry to cut you off, but he's saying, in my experience, without bomber towers, you cannot win. The game versus Byzantine, you die to trash units. Interesting. Okay. Well, I like how I like how that's two different 
quotes from MBL that you brought in, treating MBL as the expert today. That's great. Uh, dude, uh, he actually hates Arena, but he, he's he the guy that knows his late yeah, game. He's like, really he good actually knows his thing, so. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun casting with him earlier. But, you know, Bombard Towers may have been something that would have helped uh, Tato keep that mass earlier. Mm -hmm. Right now, I mean, Tato wow. calls the GG at 165 oh. pop. Dang. He's had enough. Holy mo that That might be one of the best arena games I've ever seen. Not just in this tournament. Not even because it was a long game. Like, it was just a, such an interesting game. Five relics versus Byzantine Trash in a tournament game. That's crazy. That's crazy. Now, I'm wondering if we could go back to a certain point, let's say 50 minutes, and Tato drops eight barracks and tries champion. I'm wondering what yep. happens. Because I still feel like with that many trash units, if you were to combine like maybe 10 cataphracts, 12 cataphracts, maybe the champions would not do anything. I, I actually don't know the answer. But, but um, maybe that's good. Maybe you force the upgrade into cataphract, then just, oh, I'm back to Hussar. Like, jokes yeah, on you. Maybe. You know what I mean? Maybe, yeah. Yeah. But but Bombard Tower definitely felt like a good play because I can only think of one castle from Tato that really felt like it did anything, and that was that castle in front of his TC. So it wasn't really the type of game where castling all across your base was was helping him. Um, in fact, there was one situation where he built a castle and then immediately got trapped down on the right. Mm -hmm. So if you use that extra gold to mass Bombard Towers, it allows you to hold... Potentially, I, I I do also think it takes a very special type of player to play into Bombard Towers. Yeah. Uh, and and MBL who's saying this is that player, but yeah, a heck of a game here, man. Um, in fact, the total resources collected, Tato's collected seven k more. He's collected three thousand more gold. He's collected ten thousand more food. It, it's just Byzantine trash is so freaking cheap. Six thousand relic gold, by the way. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't get better than that, really. And wow. Jordan breaking 100 APM average, so he was he was playing quite quite quickly this game. That's, had a lot of things to worry about. So from what I've been told, um, the way Jordan cues his units is with scroll wheel now. Uh, and the scroll, I've always felt like using scroll gives you APM uh, spikes. Excuse me. So yeah. I could be wrong, but like 323 APM peak at like 37 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, it makes that's, me that's on arena. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's definitely production. Yeah, it makes me think that that's probably when he's panic queuing up camels or something, right? Yeah, um, and we saw those camels hit the field as well. Yeah, but still, it was it was a really good game uh, for Jordan. That is such an amazing win for him because he was behind. Everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong, and now he just needs one win to move on to face off against you in the quarterfinals tomorrow. So, a lot of work to be done, though. I think Tato will have houseboat for us in the next one. Here we are, game four. Perfect. Tato versus Jordan. Many of you, if you left your computers or your TVs or whatever, you probably thought Tato was going to take the previous game because of the relics and because of the control. But nope, Jordan brought it back. Uh, Jordan, he is playing as the Malay in the blue. He's one win away from winning this round of 12 match against his teammate Tato. And we've got an unsurprising matchup here, Hera. Uh, Malay versus the Japanese. What are your thoughts? Yeah, um... Really interesting matchup because I, I feel like both civilizations are actually very good. So it, it's, it's not one of the situations where players are forced into B tier civilizations. Uh, these civilizations are actually like kind of like the A tier on this map, like the, 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 the top of the ladder. Um, however, I, I feel like Malay is slightly better uh, just because of the kind of uh, advantages you can get just by nothing happening. And Malay has more of those. But okay. Japanese has the potential to force more things, I feel like, because they have more of the spike early game, if that makes sense. Sure. So it might just be, you know, uh, whether Tato can make something happen early or whether Jordan can just have a, a smooth early game into it, a nice little advantage through the melee bonuses. Yeah, I think it's fairly close. I think the big differenti differentiator in the late game would be the samurai, actually. Um, both civilizations tend to go into infantry archer. Probably not a matchup where we're going to see Halberdier because Halbs makes... Very little sense, I'd say, in this matchup yeah. because both civs kind of suck on the cap front. But, you know, if it ever gets to a situation where there's one too many skirmishers out there and they try and make a switch into infantry, Japanese infantry wrecks. Yeah, um, yeah. But like you said, in terms of the uptimes for some of the early strategies, like trying to dock the opponent's water, uh, also, you know, with the Malay having more food on their fish traps, I do feel like Malay have their bonuses over the Japanese. 
I just look at these sibs pretty much on the same the same shelf in terms of strength. And I guess same tier is the gamer way to say it, but I don't know why I went shelf. <laughs> yeah, sh shelf. I mean, right next to, right next to the books that you're reading or not. Um, I, I like the uh, I like the dock from Tato though. I don't know. This is this seems to be quite standard. Jordan's doing the same thing. You go outside, like you can make a dock next to your town center, but players want to go outside to get access to more shorefish near their dock, yep. and yep. I, you basically have to do that. Uh, I didn't know that, so uh, I, I learned it. Um, but yeah, that's really cool. Of course, you get more access to shorefish. And you get more vision with the dock to make sure your opponent doesn't dock your uh, your area as well. Yeah, uh, I've seen builds where players will actually send four villagers to to make that dock, and then you have you t you take the food rather quickly, obviously. Mm -hmm. But if you really want a fast uptime, you could have four villagers on the shorefish. Uh, Jordan having three right now, and then uh, Tato having three, I guess as well. Uh, also, yeah. it's it's normally a little tempting if you have a scout and you see a villager next to a dock. You're like, hey, let's kill that. But now there's a transport ship that's always going to be around. So I remember a practice game in January for WWC. I was like, oh, my God, this guy's such an idiot. And I started attacking the Ville. Then he saves the Ville, and then my scout's weak. And then I didn't feel so good about myself. So Yeah, tr transport ships is one of those things that have such a high potential. Like, they can either just be, like, what they're used for, transport ships. But they can be, like, you know, laming sheep. You can bring them into the transport mm -hmm. ship. They can be, like, saving villagers and, like, all kinds of, like, they can be blocking ships. All kinds of things that transfers can do that you, you might not initially think of. So a couple small things that I always want to talk about on Houseboat. Uh, obviously, we'll have to pay very close attention to what strategies they go for as we could see villagers running across the map. But Tato scouting uh, shows a boar and also some deer in the corner. And if you look, you're going to find that normally. Now, it's not like perfect. You do have to scout. It's still a random map script. But uh, Jordan's got one in the right corner. And those are just transitional resources that can be helpful beyond the fish, and beyond the berries and whatnot. There's also, there's also some sheep, a couple of goose lying around. Mm -hmm. Yep. Kind of nice. If you think this map is annoying to play, everyone who's watching, imagine playing this map before you were able to put sheep inside transport ships. Because years back, you couldn't do that, and this map existed. And so what they're doing by transporting their geese or what, and whatnot underneath their TC was not possible. So they would like have to have a mill... And you also couldn't drop off food at docks either. So this map, these fast uptimes, this was not the case a couple years ago. It was always much slower by like three or four minutes, I think, to each food leg. Yeah, let me talk about... Oh, don't be scared, won't hurt. Yeah, what, what did uh, you see? That, that was the scout. Um, the scout lost a couple, uh, a couple of HP from Jordan. So he got too close to Tata's villages, I suppose. Uh, but I just want to talk about the most annoying thing about this map uh, from a player's perspective. The viewers don't feel it, but the player has to, in the mid game, when he's on three town centers, he has to constantly send from his main TC onto the transport to make use of the villages because there's no space mm -hmm. to even farm near the main town center. Uh, but more on that later, we've got Tasso now going for a forward dock straight onto Jordan's lake here. Yeah, I, having played it, I understand the complaints. I freaking love this map. Oh my god. It's <laughs> a chaos, man, and the messiness. I, I just, I don't know. There's something about it. But, but yeah, I, I'm sure we'll see examples of that later on. Some players are able to manage that more than others. And Jordan, this is pretty standard stuff. He's gone to gold. He expected that maybe Tato would show up. And he's going for a second dock at home. So this is going to be defense for him. But at the same time, there's no way for him to get any counter damage into Tato's fish. So Tato's not going to uh, hurt, hate that too much. Three yeah. Dogs versus two he dogs. The thing is, like, Malay gets advantage, as I mentioned earlier, from doing nothing, right? They, they get the faster uptime, so they're going to be up villagers <gasps> long term. Tato, Tato, Tato on the scout from Jordan! What a play! Oh, my God. Oh. He built two palisades. It just trapped that scout in there with the gold miners. Dang. And, and saved his scout. That was crazy. I caught the, I caught the end of that play, actually. That's pretty insane. Um, yeah, Tato can quick wall. We established that earlier. Um, but, yeah, a tower forward from Tato as well as he's, uh, you know, fire galleys, two docks. Jordan looking to stop this. Ooh, this is weird, because I think Jordan's villagers could get hit by fires. And then obviously a demo if Jordan ever goes near the shoreline. Jordan's going to drop his own tower. Oh, oh God. That's actually the shoreline, though. Don't don't make that tower, I think. <laughs> that's really dangerous. But who's he making it with? He placed it. I guess he's just going to... Okay, Tato loses. But you don't you don't need to make the tower. Wait, it's did Tato? This is just a demo. Well, no, I still like the tower, actually, because that it really helps with holding this position, at least from what I've seen in groups. But did Tato lose his... 
Boom. Oh my god, dude. That could have been all five. Did Tenzo Don't lose his tower? Like that, I'm sorry. I know this is messy. Did I miss that? Did he actually lose it or did he delete it? Uh, no, T Tato lost the tower. He's down to 75 stone, so he didn't delete it. He, he fully lost that tower. Jordan lost one vill to the demo only. And now they're just in a fight where, where Jordan obviously will win the fight on water because he's, uh, you know, the defender with the second dot coming up faster. Yeah, so, yeah. so much easier for him to win this. Yeah, it's a good strat. I feel like you can make arguments for both civilizations in defense as well. Uh, I remember, so, you know Nikov, like... Yep. I feel like maybe you and Nikov are, are... Oh, wow. Weak Villager. Weak Villager is getting picked off by the scout yeah. from Tato. There's another two in there, by the way. Jordan now realizes <laughs> this. Holy moly. I like how we're One like, oh, yeah, out. job's done. We don't need to talk about anything. And then just stuff <laughs> continues to happen. Uh, but Nikov basically said he's like... Initially, when I picked Houseboat in the pool and announced it, he was like, all people are ever going to do is just go double dock at home and play defense into a fish pool. Yeah. He's like, that's the only strat. And that has not been the case. That is not all we've seen. As another demo lands for Tato. But it's an even game. Uh, there's not much of a difference. We have a barracks for Jordan, barracks for Tato. Obviously, both players have safe fish. Uh, Tato adding a fifth sh fishing ship and even a second dock for more fish. Yeah, w one thing you have to keep in mind, like, let's say Jordan wins this water, right? Jordan will have six fire ships doing nothing. Yeah, I like, know. It, it's, it, it's, it's like really you, you win it and then, and then it, you invested the same amount of resources anyways. So... All it does is it makes it so Tato didn't get damaged, which could be considered a win, but at the end of the day, depends on who you talk to. Two fishing ships go down, oh, though. that Tato. was huge. Big demo. We'll kill the transport. The transport as well. Ah, yeah, yeah. That's huge. Wow. So, I mean, normally you get one fishing ship there, but to get two fishing ships and also get the transport ship, that sets Jordan yep. back. Jordan's got to make another transport before he can ferry any villagers over. He doesn't have any resources for those villagers to collect right now. And Tato's fishing ships are still freely working. So, uh, you know, back to what Nikov had said. It's funny. Then we see Nikov play for the first time, and he does the opposite of what he said was going to be the meta and dominated. Um, and later messaged me and was like, apparently, if I hate a map, I'm really good on it. Uh, really good. So <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I I can actually uh, I can actually relate to that honestly. Yeah. Sometimes the maps that you think you don't like are actually your, your maps that you just don't know about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but Jordan's uh, kind of in trouble with his food eco right now, Hera. He's got five on food. And according to the capture aid stats, at least, you, you never know if fish are going to run out or whatever, but it's 12 for Tato. But he could and, reach uh, Castle Age much faster here. The, the difference is that like Tato has been completely untouched. So no idle time. Um, the fish has been constantly working. He's now adding more docks to be able to use the shore fish with his villagers, but also to be able to make some fishing traps later around more space. So mm. Tato's really setting up around his lake, whereas Jordan, things kind of went south uh, rather quickly. He's had to adapt a lot, and uh, it's not exactly the best situation to be in as a player. Tato's resource is looking amazing right now in the bank. Great awareness there from Jordan. He hops out, he kills Tato's scout. There's a chance that Tato didn't see how many archers were there, but he does know that there's a range. It should end up being even. Jordan, I don't know what it is with him, but I see him move out with fletching a lot in tourneys this year. He's moving out without fletching again, and I don't see a blacksmith yet, so I'm a little concerned about that. But you gotta gotta think he's placing it somewhere, and he will likely get fletching. Otherwise, Tato could push him completely off of this gold. No fletching yet. Still no fletching. No blacksmith yet, Hera, and he has to abandon ship. Yeah, this is not a good position. It almost feels like Jordan was wanting to skip Feudal Age, just go straight Castle Age. Mm -hmm. But if you do that, you don't want to move out, right? Like, he, he's playing very greedy, but why are you moving out at the same time? It could be the lack of scout, right? He did lose the scout early on. Yep, I Kinda think that's the tricky part about forward. it here. I yeah. think it was good game sense from him to know he needed to buy food, though. So that's smart. Uh, also, he can just easily shift back to this other area. I love the mill and the deer. Gold is somewhat of an issue for him if he doesn't get the walls into this back corner, but he should be able to get that done. Uh, Tato just one range. Uh, still very curious on how he's going to play it because he has five on stone, which feels like a guard tower play. Instead of like two on stone would be just to recoup the cost of the tower earlier so you could go for TCs. Yeah. Oh, Tato, I don't know if it's going to be guard tower, but it might, it might even be a forward castle as well. Maybe. Or it might be that he just didn't have anything anywhere else to put the villagers on because this map is a bit messy. Yeah. Also, Jordan getting armor before fletching. Maybe he lacked the gold for a moment there. 
Uh, armor does not really have a big effect in Archer v. Archer fights, so still missing that is going to lead to him having some a, a rough ride here and just a little sloppy for the German over the last couple of movement. But if he didn't have scouting, it would make sense that maybe he just didn't know some of the stuff was coming his way. Yeah, it, it was a very awkward position for him to play, considering like Tato has all the momentum as well, because... Jordan, uh, he's constantly thinking, what's Tato up to? Tato, he, he's controlling the map. He knows what he wants to do. And in fact, it will be a guard tower push. Tower on the front now for Tato. Looking to establish control nice and early here. And, I'm, you know, probably a university will come down soon. Or maybe a town center first. But he's also stonewalling back home. Wow. Tato setting up. I love this. Dude, think about it, though. If another tower goes up in front of this, what does Jordan do to keep his pond alive? Can he do anything? Tricky. Right? Because then what's to stop Tato from just docking and clearing up everything in the middle? Or I guess you've just got to invest into more ships if you're Jordan, which also sucks. Yeah, he's, he's getting war gallery. Like, he's literally preparing for this. But that's so awkward because you're, you're investing into a technology that does nothing except if your opponent plays into it. Yep. So now if Jordan, or sorry, if Tato sees this from Jordan, he can simply not fight on water and be completely fine with Jordan wasting his resources. Oh man, Tato. He knows though he's leaving himself exposed, doesn't he? And there goes Jordan. He is getting crossbow now. He actually canceled Bodkin, I think. He didn't have the food. And Tato sending two villagers to Stonewall is the difference between losing all yeah. of this eco and losing none of it, assuming he pulls the villagers away there. There's and assuming the Jordan tower. fires. <laughs> yeah, Jordan is just still trying to find a way in there, I guess. <laughs> and now a couple war galleys coming out now as well for Jordan, looking to hold. I think th those do pretty good against Magnus as well, but Magnus also do quite a decent amount of damage. Let's see, Jordan with the micro here, looking to really stop this tower from going up. Yeah, good micro. He doesn't have Bodkin, which hurts though. And I feel like if Tato is just able to get the tower up and garrison, then he's he's still in a good position to be able to get docks down. Um, oh. I think a lot of players wouldn't maybe force the issue as much as Tato is trying to do right now. But in a fish, a good fishing matchup, I can kind of understand it. I, I don't mind the tower rush as well, because I think that it establishes control from an early point. And Jordan is not in a position where he can ever like um, counterplay this. He can't fast them. He's not going to have strong cavalry that can, you know, take out the, the, the towers easily. You can think of elephants, but those are very expensive. So mm -hmm. yep. it's almost just a great play that's very hard to punish from Tato here. Yeah. I And then also, you know, Jordan, who added that second TC earlier, he might end up being only one TC because, I mean, this, this transport business is not going to work out so well. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, I mean, even without Guard Tower, we're seeing how effective this is. Small side note, though, Tato did have a hole, and the crossbows, I said small side note, uh, this is huge. <laughs> the fish traps could wow. go down, the villagers could go down. Tato has no clue this is back here. This is worst case scenario, and Jordan stops at the perfect area, I think. He's going to kill three villas right off the bat, and also snipe the fish traps. You go for the fish traps, not the fishing ships, because of the Japanese tankiness, of course. Three villas go down, oh, fish traps go man. down. Oh, man. Tato wow. doesn't have any gold. His gold that he wanted to take was right there. He doesn't actually have any gold access. He will drop a tower. I guess he'll have to take gold more towards like the middle of the map, but he can't... As it stands right now, he cannot actually punish Jordan on water. That hole in the wall really hurt his plan. Jordan, he's going to commit here and get as many villages as possible before going down with his crossbows. Look at that. But yeah, Abulith is in now, so Tato will be able to defend with his towers. Uh, but wow, that's basically the best thing that could have happened to Jordan, who's on at two towns yep. currently. Uh, same with Tato getting the second one up now. Tato really... Okay, he does get a TC up, but that town center he just placed is not the town center you'd ever want, I don't think. I think you would want it uh, in an area with a, a little bit more control. It is. He does have the gold, so I, you know he just wants more villagers right now. Using the war galleys to snipe the dock fills and the tower fills has been very effective, by the way. Yeah, I know the has... dock is up now, but that, that's like the best thing he could have done. The guard tower was really delayed. The eco is looking worse and worse for Tato. Uh, Jordan, I uh, love how he's even taking the berries in the right. I love his TC he's position on the, the left. Center. Yeah, and he just he's... gives up on it, I guess. But do you actually do that, though? You just delete the town center? I So my rule of thumb is I would go... Uh, I would delete that starting TC once I have three TCs on the outside. But I guess he doesn't... He just wants to stop dealing with it. Uh, the monastery is funny to me, though. 
I guess he wants to convert fire ships. Oh, that's actually not bad though. It, it, but yeah, that's not bad actually. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of nice. Yeah, maybe maybe it's just easier for yourself. Like I guess like in theory you could control the water and you could keep that TC sending villagers, but at a certain point it might just not be worth the APM and it might be best for you to focus your APM elsewhere. I, I'm I'm actually like kind of bummed for Tatsu because I thought the strategy was going to work so well. And that hole in the wall really set him back. But at the same time, Jordan hasn't necessarily shown me signs that he wouldn't have just denied it anyways. Taking out the dock right there with the board galleys. Yep. Yeah, it's the kind of thing where, like, every strategy has a downside. And unfortunately, the downside to walling, and maybe the only downside, is the fact that if you have a hole, uh, you have no other defense, right? So, yep. Yep. fair enough, right? Like, it obviously sucks to see, but, um, you know, that's, that's part of the downside. And um, something that Jordan... You know, well played to him, just clicking in, looking for a way in to the base, uh, despite seeing the stone walls. It, you know, credit to him as well uh, to find that. And now 3,000 cents for Jordan, third one coming up for Tato. We're going into that mid game where I feel like Malay have the advantage in early, early imp with the uh, faster Definitely. uptime, potentially. Yeah, I think that I don't exactly understand the score. It could be the lack of scouting, it could be the amount of technologies that was researched, but I think Jordan's position is insane right now. 29 on food with wheelbarrow. Versus 17 on food. Okay, awkward moment here in the middle. Mm -hmm. Monk's like, don't mind me. And <laughs> oh. he's got the moves. Nice micro there, Monk. <laughs> Jordan actually invested clicks on that, trying to dodge. <laughs> like, it's so funny. Uh, also, I find it funny how he deleted his TC, but now he's transporting Monk's instead. Right? It, like, it the whole like point. <laughs> the whole point was so you don't have to transport stuff, but now you're transporting Monk's. That's so funny. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. <laughs> I feel like that's just down a TC, you know? Uh, Tato, he doesn't mind, though. He's still transporting villagers, and um, Tato has an amazing fishing, fishing oh, economy true. right now. Yeah. That's so nice. You don't need, and you don't need Wheelbarrow for that. I guess he has it now, but Wheelbarrow doesn't affect the fishing ship, so. Mm -hmm. Did he have gill nets? Uh, he did, he I, did I, get a first thing. Yeah, he was full okay, committed yeah. onto water, got War Galley, and then and the towers. Yeah, there you go. That, that's his whole plan. Like, prevent the water from the opponent and make use of the water to what? its fullest potential. That was a direct hit, but I guess Jordan rolled onto the hill. Whoa, what? Oh my god. Okay, Dang that's fair. Fight. Okay. Ballistics being in, though, <laughs> means those crossbows can't move out. And these guys are, like, talking like it's a ranked game because they're such good friends. Yeah. But this is, uh, this is pretty serious, man. You've got a ram now for Tato on the left. He's got crossbows there as well, and now you're starting to see Tato come back into this offensively, but just not on water. Lovely stuff from him. I guess these were crossbows that were actually in his towers that he forgot about. He's still got nine of them in those towers. Oh, really? Oh, that's actually interesting. You can really make plays happen with that. Yeah, I don't think Jordan would expect it either because he's he stayed inside those towers for so long. There's a castle from Jordan, though. I'm still loving his food eco. He could click up to the Imperial Age shortly. Nice little castle. He's still got gold in the back. Plenty of wooden food. And then I think he'll need to expand more towards the south now because that's where Tato might shift his pressure. Yeah, and, and for Jordan, we're actually not worried about the uh, the click from Tato. Like, he's up, he, he clicked in first, but... Oh, cancels it. Clicks it again. Uh, clicks it from the middle TC. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, Jordan, uh, he's not too worried about that. He's going to be a melee. He's going to catch up with his uptime. Yep. And he'll click later and be faster to the Imperial Age here, which is really, really nice. I, currently, and this is, it's weird to go by feel because we've got fish traps versus farms. And, it, you know, it just, Housebook brings different situations. But I know Tata's got a lot of map control, but I feel like Jordan's economy should lead to him having way more range here. And he gets Bomber Cannon, which Japanese do not get. So you yeah, can push, you can win. Win Trebors because you can mix in Bomber Cannons. And then you have range units that are just as strong. And I'm seeing the ranges now. We've got four ranges for Jordan in the corner. Tato's also adding some ranges as well. I'm just I'm curious on upgrades and production. Because, again, based on my feel, which is apparently wrong, as Tato's a 16 army. I think Jordan should be okay to push most of this back if the towers aren't there. I also don't even think you go Arbalest here. I think you just open straight Skirmisher. Sure. You yeah. just metagame it, right? Like, your opponent can't make anything. Yeah, there you go. Jordan, he's on straight Skirmisher. I, I definitely agree with that. Because, like, your opponent doesn't have a civilization that has a counter to Skirmisher that's effective that's from early in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's like Champion or Samurai, but that's like a long-term thing. Uh, so I'm not worried about that for now. So you just open Skirm and then use your gold, which is limited, by the way, 
uh, on Simply Siege. Chemistry into Bomber Cannon or maybe a Trevor too can be fine. Can we talk about Tata's vision real quick? So we need yep. to admire this. He can see everything, man. And the area wow. he can't actually see, he's going to pressure on. And I think Jordan has been really stunned by this. I think he was expecting a Treb War and a fight near his castle, but he doesn't have any real production here. Big shot from Jordan there. Tato. Repairs come in. Well played Jordan there. Wow. Yeah, that was sick. No castle yet for Tato in an offensive position. There's one near the middle of the map. He will not get Arbalest. He'll obviously want Bracer. And we're going to see a lot of skirms, I feel, loop all the way over to this corner. And that's what Tato is going for him. It's like the skirms can't move forward for Jordan if his towers are up. And he's just got towers just like sprinkled all around the map right now. I think what confused me is Tato didn't take those crossbows out of his towers for a long time. So I was like, he, he, how did he go from zero army to 16 so fast? I think he went from from 8 to 16. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he had like a, a good a good ball just kind of hidden away there. Yeah. Uh, he's on Arbus nice and early, by the way. He's going to go for a cap ramp push. Now, I'm usually not a huge fan of ramps, but this might be the best kind of use for them in early imp uh, where cap ramps can really shine against the civilization that's taking into skirmisher here. Mm -hmm. That's also aiming to grab relics. Not much we can really focus on with that, though. I think Jordan understands that Skirm Bombarkin can push back the Japanese. Now, if this gets to a stage where you've got untouched castles as the Japanese, you can get into Samurai, it's very different. But we are a long ways from that. Good job from Jordan to hold. 154 population versus 152. Jordan up to one. Round of 12, winner will face Hera tomorrow. This is, this is a nice compact little game for Jordan. Just stuck in his corner. Not yet ready, ready to uh, experience the real world and leave the home just yet. <laughs> yeah, getting a castle down now is him. And so the thing is, <clears throat> does he have to rush now? Tato is going for keep. And this is not something that he, he needs to get, but it's something that will buy him more time. Keeps adds a lot of HP to the tower. And even though the towers will eventually go down in theory here to the siege from Jordan, uh, it does buy him a lot more time. And I think that Tato just wants to hold most of the map and look to win with maybe some relics late game or simply by uh, squeezing Jordan um, and not preventing him and preventing him from taking wood potentially as well. Look, look at how many fishing ships Tato has, by the way. He's got 33 all so in fish nice. traps. That's sick. And I yeah. think just all, the all very efficient as well. Yeah, well I think just the fact that Malay couldn't do that in this game is a huge positive that we haven't maybe talked about because mm -hmm. Malay have so much more food on their fish traps. So that early aggression paid off at least with that aspect, but I don't know if this push will work for Tata. Does he have enough here? After Ram is uh, really underwhelming at this stage. No, yeah, Rams are garbage <laughs> for sure. Uh, it, it's really it's it's, it's a unit. It just moves so slow. I mean, look at this. What can Jordan do to react to this? He's got to think fast. Oh no, he's got ten years to do it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's the kind of thing where Rams just feel like your opponent needs to be like completely surprised for them to do anything. I I guess you could use your skirms to take out the Arbs. If you take out the TC and you just keep Jordan stuck in here, it could work. Because that's all Tata's really aiming to do. He does have his own trebs, though, near some keeps north near the north. And he could lose all of those. He has to be careful with. A keeps will only help so much. And Tata realizes now. I don't know. The cap rams kind of worked. More than I thought they would. And we see infantry upgrades now for Jordan. As he's thinking maybe about some Karambit Warriors or some two-handed swordsmen. But Jordan, he doesn't have lots of gold. Actually, Hera, I think he's almost completely out of gold access right now. Um, I actually don't agree about the Rams, by the way. You can deny gold with just range units here. Investing into Rams, it's not a big investment, but killing a town center that doesn't, doesn't really do much right now is mm. actually not that big a deal. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but forcing off the gold is a big deal, and that's something that Tato has accomplished. Uh, the thing is, there's a, there's a gold on the top that Jordan will be able to get advantage or take advantage of soon. Uh, it's going to be the Elite Samurai now that we have to focus on for Tato. He's yeah. going to go Elite Samurai plus Skirmisher. That's the best Japanese composition in this matchup, I believe. Yeah, I think I think the thing that Tato has utilized in this game has been very similar to game one, where he just says, I'm going to flood units with, with trash, uh, tr flood the map with trash, and wait for my like killer gold comp. Uh, in mm -hmm. that game, obviously, it was like Onager, Siege Onager, and whatnot. Uh, we brought this up earlier, right? Like, as we see Cannon Galleon for Jordan, which is the most ridiculous thing ever, but I guess it makes sense. Uh, <laughs> yeah, clear a couple uh, a couple of towers, maybe. But, like, what do Malay do against Lead Samurai? 
I don't think they have a single unit that can deal with Elite Samurai. And Tato Six has... Arbalest only. Actually, he has one castle, which doesn't excite me too much. But yeah, Arbalest. That would be it, and that can be countered by Skirmishers. Yeah, to be fair, he could afford a second one, and Samurai mass faster, so... <laughs> 100% agree. I feel like that's the thing I talk about the most with unique units. People ask me, why aren't unique units used more often? Well, you need castles to make them in castles. It's a very hard uh, thing to just like spam. Uh, and obviously right now, only one for Tato. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, sla really the slabs disagree impressive. these days, but I guess boyars are true. still pretty expensive, right? So. <laughs> yeah, that is true though. These days, castles cost wood and fish traps last forever. So who knows? Yeah. Well, I would like to see Jordan still consider going into infantry. If you're running low on gold, I think it makes sense to start thinking about Force Levy. It would be helpful when Tato has 63 skirmishers. Great defense from Jordan on his Bombard Cannons. Repairs those. We'll now have that gold secured in the north like you mentioned. Tato still feels very comfortable, I think, to just use all of his skirms against gold units every time he sees it. But he still has to be careful because he is losing ground. He's allowed Jordan to come back into this game a little bit. Obviously, Jordan still hasn't been able to really push from the southern corner, though, so he hasn't expanded much. He's actually just looping everything towards the middle. I actually agree with that, by the way. Like, Skirms, for a long time, now can hold with, like, 10 Arbalest, but then just prepare for Slevy just to have it. It seems yeah. like a great idea. Especially with 1,500 food. Yeah. I know you need food for Skirms, but if you feel you're on the clock with gold, you've got to go for it. Yeah, and something yeah, and that he... concerns me for Tato is he's not massing his Samurai before engaging, and one or two Samurais is, is not having a big effect in these fights if Jordan's got that small little group of Arbalest. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And he, and he kind of showed the tech as well. Like, he gave the information yeah, out there for he free. Um, kind of dubious decision there. Jordan, with the Bomber Cannons now, this is his window, man. This is his window where the Japanese, until they get a big, massive Samurai, actually struggle quite a bit. Now, listen, a few Samurai coming in now is about a dozen of them. Siege Engineers for Tato. You see how fast the Samurai do go down to those Arbs. But I think Tata's still okay with that because he sees the arbs now. Like, yeah. Now there's a structure to this. Now he, he understands he's not trickling in the units. Now he starts to push this back. But he is going to lose that castle more towards the north. Still plenty of stone for Tata to work with, though. As he's just trying to constrict Jordan. Eventually, Jordan runs out of gold. Tato could, in theory, get all the... Oh, wait, there's only one relic on this map. I actually forgot about that. There um, is? That's good to know. You tell me now? Yeah, well, so I honestly <laughs> I honestly uh, didn't find out until last week because it was just never a talking point, and I was like, wait, there's yeah. only one relic? And then Rob was like, that's literally how it's been for a month. <laughs> this is a very important cast for me right now. I've learned a lot of things about this map. That's yeah, sure. yeah. Um, that's why I like casting, actually. Learned everything. So uh, anyways, I forgot about that again until just now. Uh, so I yeah. guess he, he does have all the relics, technically. But I guess the gold control is still really good. I don't know. Like, Jordan's creeping forward. Come on, Jordan. Start to get your infantry upgrades, man. Still feel like it'd be very helpful. He's getting town patrol here. Priorities, D9. Priorities. Yeah, he needs true. to see some, some more stuff first. Um, I mean, Jordan, am I, am, I, am I not seeing this right? Jordan has all the infantry armor. Like, why did he get that even? Yeah. I think so I think he is, he is really distracted right now because of tattoos. Okay. Bullshit. Like... He could lose his treb in the north. He got that castle denied. Now there's a castle from Tato. Tato will have trebs immediately. That's that's some crazy timing right there. To have three trebs immediately after completing that castle in this type of a game, that's not something you can normally do. Yep. A shout out to the random geese that are still running around the map in the midst of these armies. I feel for oh, you you're guys. You're seeing them right here. Yeah, there. they're out there, man. <laughs> and I think I, love it. Yeah. I think they're in control groups too. So I think they're gonna continue to march around with the armies right now. Literally moving left and right, kind of making something <laughs> happen there. But look, like uh, three trebs, and now Jordan is responding with a bomber cannon. But by the time he reacts, oh, Tato accidentally misclicked the mining camp. Oh my god. Once again, priorities. It's harder. It's harder to misclick that mining camp than it is to actually click the castle. But he's yeah, still he's still be... pressuring everywhere, which is still really important. <laughs> that might be unluckier than the hole, actually. That misclick. That's pretty, <laughs> right. that's pretty insane. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it looks like there's gonna be no defense for Jordan on this side. It's impossible because the samurai will deal with the bomber cannon yeah. in, in theory here, but, uh, and the castle just won't hold up that much. But Tato doesn't have defense for this massive ball from Jordan. Really, I mean, and if the castle goes down here, suddenly all this eco behind this, especially the fishing ships, all those fishing ships could get picked off. 
<laughs> so I really think it's the samurai number that needs to, to mass at home right now for Tato. It's not that his raid is bad. Obviously, he's doing a great job. I think Jordan's still got a chance, maybe. So Tato has 40 on food, and he's got 40 fishing ships. He doesn't have a single farm on my screen, bro. Oh, and his, Zero farms. his stuff's right behind this. It's right behind it. He literally needs to hold this middle or else he's going to lose the game. He's going to lose all his food income. So and it's a really interesting position right now. Yeah, and there's enough arbs here, Hera. There's 21 arbs, and Jordan's always keeping the arbalest behind the skirms. So unless there's like 20, and now a boar's just died to samurai. Unless there's like 25, <laughs> 30 samurai with the skirms, I'm not sure I'm liking the fights. Obviously, you, you see Tata realizes this. He's actually swinging a lot of military to the north now. Yep. Bringing his trebs over as well. So instead of continuing that side push, he, he felt like, you know, he did he did enough on the side. Yeah. The way, he, you know, he just forces, uh you know, Jordan away from that area, away from those resources. Now he's going to focus on the center. Yeah. And, and honestly, if he holds from this, feeling really good about his position. Jordan is backed into a corner. Jordan doesn't have a lot of gold. It's just Jordan still is, has that big army mass. Jordan's behind in economy. He's behind in late game control. But are the samurai good enough? Jordan's unit control has been so sick. He always wow. has the arbalest where he needs them to be. Look at the bomber cannons. He saves all three of them there. Skirms on the front. Bom bomber cannons hiding from the samurai. Arbalest at a safe distance. Yep. It's literally perfect here. The trebuchets Going from down. Tato goes down. Wow. Jordan can do this. He's got 10 more range units in queue. He still has solid wood, solid food. He still has enough gold to still mix in arbs. He's at 27 arbs now. It says on my screen that Tato has 33 samurai, but the samurai are all spread out. They're raiding. They're everywhere. They're not in, in, in one area where they can actually accomplish a whole lot right now. And they do have really low pierce armor. They have five pierce armor, which is it actually five? Is it that bad? Wow. Yeah, it's five. It's five. Infantry gets dis disrespected wow. in, in this game compared to archers. Yeah, I know. So they take five damage a hit and they have what, 80 HP? They're even taking two damage from the elite skirmisher. So Yikes. Elite skirmisher, yeah. No way. Jordan could yeah. win the series with this gate, this push right here. What is happening? The samurai number is at 18. So I don't think straight skirmisher is going to cut it. Not with bomber cannons being out there. What? The castle's about to go down. It's at less than 1,000 HP. The trebuchet stays up. Two cannons stay alive. By the way, one thing I saw that I, I want Jordan to win after seeing it. He went galleon to prevent the push. He actually teched into galleon to hold the water. Yeah. So smart. Hold the water, hold that bottom. Dominate the water. If he could if he could get a dock up on that shoreline from Tata, like Tata's screwed at that point. And you can deal with galleons, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Such a smart tech there. The score is so close now. Only 500 in it for Tato. I really wish I could tell you guys how many samurai have been created so far because I, it has to be at least 100. And I haven't been that convinced. <laughs> he, he needed the ball of them. Remember he had one castle when he started off? That was the issue. Yeah. Is he really needed all of his castles to mass in the same spot and then roll in. But honestly, yeah. <laughs> again, the way Jordan has controlled this range units here is just been as close to art as it gets. The arbs are always safe. They're always at the perfect distance where if samurai do show up, the samurai get chewed. It's zero relics for Jordan. Jordan was backed into a corner to the point where it's a wasteland in that right corner now. But he's slowly, wow. he's surely moving forward, and he still has more army. And at this point, Jordan's literally securing anything he can get. Wood lines, that's going to be valuable because he's running kind of low on wood lines. Only, he's only got two right now, but he, he's been making the best out of literally nothing uh, back there. Um, now we're going to see Tato actually dock Jordan's area. He's going to go for some fast fire ships. Ooh, that's smart. That's very interesting. Yep. Yeah. He's going to control that whole area now. Kill the cannon galleons and the galleons and be able to kind of gain access to that part of Jordan's base. Trying to see where Tato's producing from right now because that's an issue. He's got 69 skirms in queue. But oh my god, he's no got, way. He's got six ranges. So I've done the math, and that doesn't seem too good. <laughs> that yeah, that no, is an issue as he loses the castle in the north. And he does have samurai up there. I don't know, man. I'm not impressed with the samurai. It makes me sad because I love the samurai, and I think there's melee situations where they're very strong. But against range, Japanese struggle so much. They don't have bomber cannon. They only have onager. Their light <laughs> cannon are also very bad. He has 10 scrims in, in, in every range. He literally needs more production right now. Yep. It's very important. That's why, that's why he's losing the fights consistently because his scrims aren't, aren't massing enough fast, like aren't massing fast enough to re replenish. It does, I do like Onager with the way his resources are floating. 
in theory, the Bombard Cannons could always take care of that. But also, if Jordan looks away for a second, he could lose all of his expensive gold units. And here's actually a moment. That's a big shot with the oh onagers there. And the next volley will do nothing. But this, this has changed things. And now we have Karambit Warriors for Jordan. But why are we making Karambit Warriors when you can make two-handed swordsmen that only cost food? <laughs> you got yeah, the infantry I... upgrades earlier, man. Rabbits are it kind costs of troll. gold. Just get ah. Uh, maybe it's too late. Maybe he just genuinely doesn't have enough gold, where you can even get those texts now. Yeah, you you're actually stuck. You can't get it right now. Yeah, yeah you you, actually, you you have to go light cav if you want a unit right now. If you're Jordan, but like light cav are obviously trash. But that's the only trash unit you can go for besides skirmishers right now. That suddenly the queue for Jordan's not looking so good. A lot of this is caught up with him. I think his farm started to expire. Also losing his fishing ships. Also, the units that he's queuing out of those ranges at home could get sniped by Tato's war galleys. That will add up. Tato's transporting. He's going to go for towers in Jordan's base. What are we watching here? Let's go. That's sick. But there's also, like, no one there anymore. <laughs> they, they left, bro. They, they were there. Now they're not. Yeah. <laughs> they're now Wait, in your awesome, eco, right? Tato. Tato's resources are still looking really good. His castles are on the other side of the map, though. So it won't be samurai for him. It's going to be skirms. It's going to be onager. Uh... He still has crazy unit queue, and his fishing ships have been safe. Jordan at 89 vils, but the army count's now even, and oh, the Arbalest. Yep, there's an issue. He, he used to have 21 Arbalest, now he's down to 11. It could even be more than that. Tato's happy to sacrifice skirmishers to kill the Arbs. Yep, 10 skirmishers, 1 Arb, but we take those. Yep, it. that's fine. Also, we have Rams going in for the production from Jordan. A castle's going to go down from Jordan now, but from the Trebs from Tato. I mean, for a while there, it looked like Tato was going to take this game. Then I thought he was going to throw this game. And now I'm thinking that maybe Jordan has to make something more happen in the north. Otherwise, he could be finished. Tato is all over him right now. Yeah, it's, I don't know what happened. I, I think that once Tato sorted out his production or his the way he uses units, he actually had a lot more resources than we than he initially thought of. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, and the fact that he's using fish traps. One one thing we don't talk about a lot is that fish traps have a really good food to wood ratio on them. So, long term, those these things add up here. And Jordan feels like he's out of steam now. All of a sudden. Yep. Yeah, they, like the push in the north is giving him access to gold, but what was allowing him to have success was the fact that he had twenty to thirty more military consistently, and that's just simply not going to be the case anymore. He's 20 to 30 behind. He's he's stuck not even in the corner, but kind of like on the right middle of the map now. And Tato's just been whittling down arbs, whittling down skirms. And now Samurai are actually going to get the highlight, maybe, as they will should be able to finish off what's left. GG Dang. Played well. Wow. A third series is going to decide her, man. Oh, my God. That's sick. What a game from Tato. Also, yep. most created unit from Jordan, 40 skirmishers. Or 400. <laughs> 40 would be pretty bad. Um, <laughs> Tato's most created unit was 358. However, he has 85 in Q. <laughs> yeah. So, he's catching up real quick. Yeah, maybe he needed a few more ranges there. But, uh, well, yeah, we'll go to the, the final game. I forget what the map will be. I think it's Jordan's home map. But this is to move on to the quarterfinals against you. They're certainly building up their stamina for tomorrow. Yeah, holy moly. Tato. I'm going to finish in three games, hopefully. He almost lost the game despite collecting 30,000 more resources. More wood, more food, more gold, and more stone collected. Uh, he took control early, though it was a long time ago. He took control early, held control with towers. Impressive win from Tato. That's why he probably picked the map. What is this final? Don't tell me it's going to be like... I guess all the real boomy maps are out. Oh, it's going to be Arabia. Oh, I forgot about Arabia. Let's go. <laughs> Suddenly, Harris like, yes. Here we are, game number five. Got Tato in the red playing as the Hindustanis, and we have Jordan playing as the Aztecs. It wasn't that long ago, Hera, we were having that conversation about the Gurjaras on ravines, and you said, if you think this Civ is OP, just ban it. You have three global bans, and, well, the Hindustanis and the Gurjaras have been talked about a lot. Hindustanis, if they get to that Gulam, they can be devastating versus Mezzo Civs. Dude, Hindustani... Okay, let's break it. Let's be real here. Hindustani is one of the civs that a lot of people talk about. A lot of people say is broken. Aztecs has been at the top of the game for the last 20 years. True. And now we're seeing them face off. It's like the new civ here that is somewhat really strong uh, versus the civ that's tried and tested. 
Maybe players don't think it's as strong nowadays, but they have a lot more experience on it here. So it's a very interesting matchup yeah. from that perspective. Yep, yep. And now we're seeing Jordan going for the lame. Two sheep running to the corner of the map, but Tato, he's close behind. He doesn't spot it. Wow. This is also part of what makes Aztecs, Mayans, Incas dominant in the early game. That Eagle Warrior, uh, it would win a 1v1 fight against a scout. Uh, used to have more vision, actually, and that was at one point changed. But so far, so good for Jordan with the lame. Uh, so wow. much on the line for him. And I think he's not going to get away with these picks because I think Tato will find them. But he could actually kill them if Tato's close by. Like, Jordan could, is being super annoying so far. Yeah, he can stay. He, he wins the fight. Tato trying to take the hill. Jordan goes up higher, though. Wow, that's, that's a big moment right there. Now Tato can't contest. Jordan, he's, he's about to take four sheep away from Tato here. And there's a fifth one running away. Look at the pig in the corner. <laughs> How did he find him so quickly? Yeah, yeah he's trying to flee. Yeah, that, man. I mean, okay, so here's what hurts. This happens so fast that Tato doesn't know he lost the other two near his boar. Wow. So if he, I mean, he's brought in his boar early, so that doesn't get taken. He could take his other boar. He could push in his deer. But let's assume he only gets his one little piggy back from the corner. That does delay some of his strategies or potential strategies. If he wanted to go for early drush, he wouldn't be able to do that quite as easily now. Um, I'm with you, though, Hera. You know, like, Aztecs might not be our shiny new toy, yep. but Aztecs, uh, they've got an insane win rate. They've also been high up on the ban list for good reason. I think with the stone being forward for Tato and being lamed already, he's certainly going to have his work cut out for him in early feudal age here. Yeah, and, and he's doing the best he got. Like, so basically, when you get lamed, the, the natural reaction, you got two options. Either you go counter lame or you go lure deer. Tato's opted for the deer luring. Uh, but now Jordan, he's still around with his eagle, could potentially block some more deer luring and just be super annoying right now because the eagle mm -hmm. just beats the scout one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, I feel like if I'm Jordan, I try and find my resources right now, but I think that's a player preference thing. Um, mm -hmm. You already have taken enough away where you're going to have a benefit, and what you don't want is for Tata to find that later on. But uh, Jordan's insane with his eagle. He's like, nope, you're not going to do this. I'm not going to let you get that food. If I can add another perspective to that, game five of a decide like in a decider, you always go for the thing that tilts your opponent, in my opinion. So going yep. for going for the the preventing the dealer is probably the the more impactful uh, of the two approaches, actually. Yeah, I guess it also depends on how much it affects your play from home, right? True, it shouldn't true. affect your play from home, but there are instances where, like, let, let's say he only sold two, but he was missing four. Like then it's like, ooh, if that affects me. We know we've hurt him, but we don't want to delay our build order. But I don't really see that being an issue for Jordan. I think his build's perfect so far. Uh, he's building up the barracks. We haven't really talked about bases and whatnot, but I actually prefer his base a little bit more than Tato's because Tato's gold and stone could be an issue. Um, but yeah. still, Tato's going to click up at lightning fast pace. Good work from him there. Yeah, that's that Hindustani bonus coming in. Also, you know, he got in a couple deers, or uh, yeah, he got in one deer. Um, and th that's going to be a decent click up, but the thing is, Tato is going to have very little food uh, in early feudal days. So Scouts is basically not an option. Men at Arms basically not an option. Yep. He's going to be forced into range units, and I, I don't know if Jordan actually knows that. Uh, Jordan back home has a lot of options, of course, with the extra resources. Can easily open Men at Arms if he wants to, or he can just open his own uh, kind of range units and just get a faster cast age time because of all the extra hunt and food that he had available. Yeah, look at look at Tato's scouting for a second. And then look at Jordan scouting. <laughs> Jordan's seen 50% of the map. How did he manage? With I, what, the sheep, I guess? What yeah, he scouted a lot with the sheep. Yeah, yeah. I think what I'd like to do after this game, win or lose, is I'd really like to look back and see when Jordan came forward. Because it was so fast. It mm -hmm. feels like he, he found two of his sheep, uh, two of his extra sheep, and just immediately went forward with no hesitation. Yeah. And, and it just and what worked happened? out for him. He, he, he got quote-unquote lucky, you know, I'm going to say quote-unquote lucky, because he found Tato right away uh, with his eagle. Sometimes you go to the wrong area, but at the, at, at the end of the day, that's just kind of like, you know, how you get rewarded by being so aggressive with the, with the early scouting. So definitely definitely respectable here. And it's going to be a men-at-arm approach from Jordan, like I said earlier. He had the option. Tato, he's going to have to go for the defensive approach, the archers. That being said, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but he was forced into it. So I wonder if that was his actual idea or not. Now he's going to see the gold. He might actually loop back in front of Jordan's base to see if there's a barracks here. Sees the TC. Jordan's moving forward now. Jordan obviously had seen pretty much everything. I mean, dream start for Jordan. I don't think you're going to get starts that are much better than this when you need one victory. Um, particularly with 
the way Hindustanis have performed if they get to Gulams as well. You want to gain whatever lead you can. Tato not knowing about this is going to hurt him here. Here he is with his villagers, and now he's actually going to see those three militia, and he doesn't lose anything there. He was able to get his wood upgrade. That's what I was paying attention to. And yeah. I would say with an archer opening, you're not always getting horse collar, so that's not having that's fine. So, so far, so good for Tato beyond getting slightly housed. Jordan will follow up here with an archer here shortly. Yeah, and the important thing to note with this Arabia is that it's not the most aggressive Arabia. So it might be just two extremes of Arabia. There's the KOTD one, which is like the super open. You're not finding a spot for town center because there's hills everywhere. And then there's this one, which is the other extreme in my opinion when it comes to having good wood lines. And so for Tato and for Jordan, like Jordan's going to be fully walled in just a second here. And he's going to have no threat at home. But Tato, he, he did the small walls, which helps early. But it's going to be a lot harder to secure his map in its entirety. Yep. Uh, yep. So the range follow-up will be nice from Jordan. It's interesting right now. Tato's like, where is that army? Because he saw it. Mm -hmm. And Jordan, I think, is like... I think he's looking at the bush, honestly. Was he looking at the bush? He was looking at how much food was on the bush, and he's waiting for that. But Tato's yeah, actually going to move forward. But yeah, he, he did have the eagle within the perfect vision there. Yeah. He would see the bush, and he's just still chilling, but... Yeah, yeah, he definitely checked. Look, look at how he's playing. He's, he definitely yeah. checked, yeah. Uh, which is very, very interesting. So we'll check back in there. 60 food. I don't know if Tato will make that mistake. Tato, of course, might just read that and not overchop the berries or over bury it, whatever you can call it. Uh, Tato's going for a counterattack. No fletching for him just yet. He's moving out. Blacksmith coming down. Jordan with a faster fletching here, not taking any risks. And he's walling his entire base now with three villagers. Yep, yep. I mean, even if he doesn't do damage here, he knows he'll be safe the potential to do damage if he moves out with his archers. Tato trying to be sneaky. This is an important moment. If he goes right now to that opening, he could stop this. He's oh my god. Right Jordan, now. you definitely make this house, bro. You make this house all the time. <gasps> oh it's my god. House. Oh! oh, make the house. Oh my god. He made the house. Okay. That's insane. Yep. That's the difference right there. That's, that's, the difference. that's a massive difference. Yep. yep. And Tato could have killed a villager there and taken momentum. <laughs> Imagine you're brand new. It's like, oh my god, he made a house. What's wait? Why? Why is that important? It's just, it's like, it literally is just, just like at home. the dumbest statement ever. <laughs> They're like, I always make houses. What do you guys mean? Yeah, like Viper. So, so earlier today when I was casting with Viper, he made a statement about how, you know, how if you attack someone's farm, the farmer stops working. Stops working. Yep. Yeah, he's like, it doesn't really make any sense. And I was thinking, but we also put partially built houses to stop armies. Yeah. <laughs> I was like real, real life we're stepping right yeah. over there you know? i was like if i was a farmer i'm pretty sure i would stop working as well if arrows were flying towards yeah. my farm but here comes that army from jordan and tato does react nicely he got town watch that's why a very good play tato got, yeah tato got town watch and and jordan stayed out of vision for a long time there but uh yeah both players actually played really well there to be fair and now more archers for tato uh but at the same time jordan doesn't actually need to fight here mm -hmm. he can run away whenever he wants to I think he should maybe consider it. Obviously, dancing isn't the worst thing to do here, but uh, you do want to have some type of an archer mass towards the next stage. Maybe he doesn't, actually. He could always play towards eagles. But look at the follow-up there from Jordan. He went to the gold. The villagers had to pull off of gold as well. And when you're fully walled and you've taken the initiative from Dark Age onwards, it's very easy to play. Tatos has to work a lot harder right now to make things happen. Yeah, and one thing I always say, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of an extreme statement, but in my opinion, the first step to be aggressive is to fully wall your base. Uh, it's, it's a weird saying. I know it sounds uh, very counterintuitive, but now that Jordan's fully walled, everything he has goes forward. He's got nothing on defense. Whereas Tato, he's always got to keep a little bit of units to defend his base until he can get all the walls down. It's such a big difference. I think Tato maybe made a mistake chasing. I mean, you have to expect a follow up. So chasing three archers and three men at arms with seven archers. Is a little bit of a surprise to me, but look at this. He's actually going to place a tower on the stone. Really risky because he didn't have the army there in that moment. And we will see both players go for a market to go up. And I think Jordan realizes if Tato can get to Gulams, there's not a ton Aztecs can do. Now, they can do, I think, a bit better than Mayans with the Jaguar Warrior yeah. champion. Champions. But... Uh, infantry is the only, uh, only counter. Yeah. And so he sells the stone. This is going to be an all-in play from Jordan. As for if it will be archers and uh, siege or, or all-in eagles or both, we'll see. Jordan's food eco is incredible, but he doesn't actually have that much on gold. Normally right now you're seeing a second range uh, or you're seeing a second uh, barracks if it's going to be some type of all-in play. 
I, I almost think the tower from Tato is, is, is killing him more than anything. Like that, that prevented him from selling stone. I know he wants to play safe, but maybe it's not the time to play safe in a, in a, in a final game here. Maybe it's time to take more risks because now he's not going to be able to sell stone. He's behind in terms of castleage. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to crossbow versus crossbow early games or early castleage, uh, ballistic timing is very important. And also Bodkin uh, crossbow timing is very important as well. Well, he is keeping himself protected. He's got house walls everywhere on the sides, house or stone walls. Uh, the front of his base near the gold could be an issue. However, he could always take the side gold. Though I guess the side gold's also a bit vulnerable. Um, if it's one range for Jordan, inside. he's wow. definitely going to go siege. He sees the tower. He knows he needs to stop that. Tato, it would actually would be. Well, no, this is a silly fight to be taking here. I'm gonna say maybe a time to force a fight, but that's probably what I do, and then I just it's even worse for me. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, it, it's, oh, it's, I gotta stop really him, weird. and then I just die more. So the, the thing is, because top players know the timings they, they, they have to hit, they know when they're vulnerable, right? So they're not gonna be in the wrong spot. Like right now, Tato, uh, sorry, Jordan's moving out only because he knows he has more, right? Only reason. Yep. I like and... how Tato's placed the tower, but at the same time, I don't think Jordan will be too upset to have forced it. Because you're mm -hmm. taking your opponent a little bit further away from that castle. Tower does go up. Don't think a situation. I don't think this is a situation where guard tower would necessarily be the play for Tato, but maybe because it protects the stone and gold. He might, might actually have to rush guard tower. Actually, now that I think about it, it'd be a very Tato thing to do. But I, my opinion on guard tower is, if I'm ever going guard tower, things are already bad for me. So like, I always try and do something else. It doesn't feel like a win condition in most cases. Yeah, to be fair, um, Guard Tower is one of those things where usually, unless you're like a player like Tato who likes to go for it aggressively, usually you you do it when you don't have the other option. But I definitely agree with you. It's like, it's not the best option because it's very stagnant, but you do it when you have no other option. It's actually quite good. Yeah. And Jordan. in this case, gonna go for some Siege. Uh, Tato is defensive Siege. Yeah, Jordan will see that, that that stone's been abandoned here. Uh, Tato does have just enough gold to get Bodkin Arrow. He's going to send his archers inside of his tower, which I think is perfect. And then he's also going to make his Manganel here. Remember, Jordan is all in. He cannot boom for now. Sometimes players will buy the stone back and add the TCs. Tato will have two TCs. And it, as Jordan sells and is going to buy the stone back, Tato doesn't have any way to counterattack Jordan right now. So I would not mind to see a little bit of a broom appro boom approach. Not No brooming here. Um, oh god, Tato delete. Oh my god, deletes! And don't tell me the tower gets that. Oh my god, that was so close. Why is the first tower not down yet? How is Jordan oh. not just finishing it off? This is so risky. It's very weird. Hmm. Man, this is this win is so important to Jordan, man. <laughs> this is, win is yeah. massive. Uh, Tato's, playing, Tato's playing for a few hundred dollars. Jordan's playing for the potential ticket right now. I mean, yeah. both have a lot on the line, but Jordan, it's monumentally more, right? Yep, kind of especially but, but hey, Tato's going to let him win, by the way. <laughs> right, right. Also, look uh, at Tato. He just sent a villager outside of his walls, and he found stone in the south, bro. Oh, my I God. wonder if Jordan will ever check that, because he was down there in the past when he lost his army. I would never check that stone if I were Jordan. Um, Will he spot it? I, I don't think so. I, I think, think he's just yeah, checking yeah, the golds, honestly. Yeah, he, yeah. He's kind of forcing his opponent off of gold. I'll tell you why I don't think he's going to check it. Because he, he sees no holes in the wall right now. So yeah. he's like, okay, no one passed through here. Um, but yeah, who knows? <laughs> that would be a really crazy find if he does get it, though. Oh my wow. god, that attack round. That's two epic shots from Tato, who has the villager lead. I mean, just slightly, but he is on stone, which is what you want in this matchup. And Jordan just backed off of that push really quick, Jordan. He didn't finish off the original tower, which was odd. Um, he didn't commit to ballistics. He was only one range. Maybe he felt like he did enough, but I didn't see many villagers go down. I, I don't think it was that good of a push, actually. It had so much potential, but I actually feel like Tato did a fantastic job defending. If the, if the forward tower went down, like the initial one, it would have been a lot better because now that stone is, uh, is exposed, but now the yeah. tower's still up. It's very awkward. Let's see what Tato can accomplish with this one Manganel. It's already done so much here. I, I love Redemption, though. I, I think you're floating that much gold. He's not spending it on any more Siege, so I, I like that. Um, Tato's still going to place towers in his wood line here. Interesting. I mean, he's if he has that stone in the south, 
he's fine. Because he's going to have the stone in his base and the stone in the south and three TCs. And he will definitely get to a castle in this game. And maybe we need to fast forward a little bit and just think, like, what do you do as Aztecs? What do you make against the Ghulam? Uh, there's rumors, I guess, in the in the public testing build that the Ghulam will receive some type of a nerf. Yep. It's super strong against eagles and archers, which is something that we normally see from the Aztecs. Yeah, and the thing is, like, um, you know, Aztecs, they have options, but it's like last game. The options don't come out too fast. Redemption, though, big conversion oh. for Jordan on the Magnol. Yeah. Kind of, you know, halts the conversation temporarily as the Magnol switches over. But now Tato, almost enough stone for Castle here. Against Ghulams, early on with, with the Aztecs, Monks are okay. Monks and Crosses are okay. But when there's 10 or more Ghulams, you need to switch into something else. And that's usually going to be Long Swords up until Champion or Jaguar Warriors as the two options. But none of those are really amazing units on their own, right? Yeah, true. And Tato, he's really trying to decide on where he places this castle right now. I think he might need to build it behind his TC. Just give it up. Oh, he's going to place it on the other side. Interesting. And Jordan immediately notices this. I don't like that castle from Tato. That castle is not correct. No, I think you place I mean, the castle in front of your main TC. And then if you just want that gold, you just send Gulams over there after your castle's up. Yeah, yeah. That, that seems much better. Now, he's making a tower where you wanted it. Now, he's losing villagers on the bottom castle as well. Jordan's like, Jordan was there with the four crosses for a long time. He should have known about them. That's yeah. a really weird decision. I guess there's desperate for the gold. only lost one vill, I guess. Yeah, I guess the at the, the same time, like, he wants gold and he wants a castle. So if he reverses the order, he's probably still getting gold and still getting a castle. It's just a difference in outlook. Yep, yep. So I, I don't mind that. I would like to see Jordan kind of prep a little bit more for late game here. Um, think about what your unit comp is going to be. Get as many relics as possible. And and what a, what a fun match this could be if this turns into Gulams. Uh, and hand cannons versus like champions and skirmishers or something. A really unique Viper matchup. Recently, Viper says that Gulams are not that crazy. He says that, or at least I've heard him say. I don't know his opinion now, but I've heard him in the past say that he doesn't. He doesn't see what the hype around Gulams is all about. Well, um, he also. I saw him play against Gulams twice in Titans League, but he always had elite plumed archers, and he always had a twenty okay. vil lead. So if I had a twenty vil lead in elite plumes, then I would probably think the same. Okay. Uh, but. Very rarely can he disagree with the man. So, you know, his his outlooks generally... Not always. Okay, I don't want to give him too much credit over here. But, like, his outlook is <laughs> pretty solid. So, like, yeah. he was the guy who kind of... In, um, he started to play a certain way and do certain things before it was cool. Like, getting the, the Castle Age farm upgrade right away. Uh, playing as Khmer before all their crazy bonuses. So, you got to give him credit there at least. He's really good at figuring out what's strong out of the non-standard options, pretty much. Sure. Uh, yeah. so definitely, I hold his opinion with good weight, but that being said, from my experience with Gulam, I think in the right moment, they're actually they're crazy insane. strong. Yeah, yeah. So, and we're, you know, maybe... we're approaching yeah, a situation where that could happen, too. Armor's yep. coming in. The mass is up to eight. If you get to, like, 12 of them, you could consider moving out. But I think Jordan's going to try and go for the kill here. I foresee a forward castle. Maybe I'm wrong, actually, because he was trying to send the villagers forward and the Ghulam spotted him. But whoa, 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 what? whoa. What? The gate was whoa. still open? Whoa, whoa. Who left the door open? Dude, that was in for like a whole minute after the villager was off it. Okay. I, that's, I think that's a bug, dude, because that gate was definitely closed. <laughs> that was not open. Uh. Also, Eagle uh, in the south has found that gold now in that TC. Yep. That's going to annoy Jordan big time. That Ghulam could kill a couple of villagers in here. And also, just the two Ghulams being there meant he couldn't go forward for this castle he wants. Mm -hmm. I think that was just, part of his whole uptime here, was the faster and, uh, forward castle. And it just shows, like, the, just being active on the map, you get rewarded. If it's a bug, if it's a, a nice find, something's going to happen most yeah. of the time just by being on the map. It, it's a really weird thing, but it's... Yeah, it's just something that happens when you're, when you're proactive, basically. You're going to find windows of opportunity that you don't normally have here. It's been a long series. There's a lot in the line here. Winner moves on to face you tomorrow in the quarters. Both players had really solid group showings. Tato, of course, coming in third. Jordan coming in second. Tato in the group of death. I think third was no shame. They ended up facing against each other here. Jordan is coming forward anyways, and I love his use of the monks here. Yep. Still feels like he's going to be able to get this castle up, and Tato hasn't even clicked imp yet. This castle is monster timing. 
uh, faster imp doesn't matter in most cases unless there's a forward castle then it really matters the forward castle is just absolutely massive and now Tato he knows he has to fight right now he's actually going all oh. in cool are coming forward if there weren't monks here this wouldn't be an issue he has to take care of the monks first and no way wow wow no wow. way conversion on the magnet level shoots the guard tower gets the villager doesn't prevent it from going up though Tato now he's a hundred percent committed to this one uh. guard tower going down there's more gulams on the way here. He's got to focus the vills, I think, because your guard tower will go up, but you do not focus army. You focus vills. Yep. If you focus the vills, you've got a very good chance to deny this. He's also making elephants to ram it down here. It's at 90%. Too much. Jordan gets it up. It's too much. Jordan's getting more vills from home as well. 99, 100%. Oh my God. Tata went so heavy to try to deny that. He knew it was his only chance, and now it's up. How do you continue the game? But this is awkward because that guard tower is like actually doing a lot. And if you need to get units out there to take care of the elephant, it I guess the tower doesn't do that much. I don't know. It's just a really weird situation. I'm just staring at this. It doesn't quite make sense. It's but like Tato's going to continue. Uh, Tato's wood like... count's insane right now. He really needs to... Uh... He really needs to get rid of some of that wood. Maybe buy and sell some resources. Also, he's using the tower to try and focus down the monk. Jordan is going to try and convert the elephants. Jordan's going to lose this uh, castle. Yeah, this is really awkward, actually. Like Tato with the one guard tower is making things very difficult. I don't think Jordan should panic too much. But don't go for weird stuff. Like, why are you going to convert <laughs> the elephants? Just repair the castle. Get some Jaguar Warriors out. Uh, Not Trebuchet. Jaguar Warriors would be insane here. I know. I, I'm surprised. Are you, oh, Trebs. I guess he this maybe feels like he needs Trebs before. My brain is breaking right now. But you, you don't lose this castle ever, bro. Ever. Jordan. That castle is gonna go down. That one guard tower literally won it for for Tato, or won this position. Won the position. The yeah. Down, yeah. The eco is still really good for Jordan, and that could have been part of yeah. it as well. Like he could be thinking, "There's no way I lose from here." But that Treb. That he just built is going to go down to these siege elephants now. Dude, these elephants are on one, bro. They're going for the <laughs> treb. They get the treb. Someone, someone hold these elephants back, bro. And now Arbalest <laughs> for Jordan. Here's the positive thing. So as of now, Tato is on one castle. It's about to be two. Actually, wait a second. I was going to say positives for Jordan. Wait, if he doesn't have siege, he cannot stop Jordan from making gulams. And he's going into Arbalest. You just, you literally need Elite Gulam from Tato, like the upgrade, and then 20 he's, of them will wipe everything. Yeah. Like, literally. Yeah. It, it's really, like, it, there's a massive jump from regular Gulam to Elite Gulam. Yeah. Uh, you also do not need to research the final armor upgrade to get 8 Pierce Armor, because there's the, the jump is in the unit upgrade itself. So Underrated fact, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because normally plate mail takes almost two minutes. So just having to get Elite, I, I don't know if he'll be able to afford it, but that's not bad. Jordan is still pressuring. He still has a massive lead. He still has three relics. And this is definitely one of those games where I feel if he loses this, I'm going to feel gutted for the guy. Like, he, he, that was his position right there to win the game. Um, he will place another castle. It's still controlling all of these golds. Maybe still. Yeah, the big thing is off. the Jaguar Warriors, right? Like, will he think to go Jags? But that, that's, the, that's the idea. Like, 10 Jags with the Arbalest, that's going to be very hard for the Gulams to pressure into. Yeah. But the question is, it's such an obscure unit that we don't even know if Jordan will think of it and, and go for it. We already saw him prioritize Trebs once upon a time here. He's going supplies. I like it. Okay. I like Champions. it because you, you're, you're on one castle. If that other castle yeah. doesn't get elephant, elephanted down. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I like I like that. I like the fact that I could say that. Um, but, you know, if you have two castles, then Jags maybe make more sense. You can at least prep eight to ten barracks and get more production. Uh, Jordan has elephant Gulams. rams and actual rams here. This is right. a, a very interesting situation. Tato using the TC, though, to focus down the arbs, which is very yeah. nice. I'm looking at the military for Jordan. Honestly, if he didn't have the castle, he would get completely wiped by these Gulams. He... Oh, God. Now he's got Gulams coming in at home. He's got a house wall out. Very well played there. Still only on Longsword as the Gulams could find these villagers. What a weird game here. What a weird yeah, I, game. I swear Jags are just better though. Cause like the Jags come out right away. Like you have a castle on the front. Just make 510. Yeah, just no, I agree. 510, you know? What I mean, it, it I guess hold. I mean in terms of committing for the long term, right? Like making, yeah, yeah, for sure. making a couple of them right now, it gives you a ton of bang for your buck, certainly. Yeah. 
And, and he's finally going for some from the back, uh, from the defensive castle now, uh, is Jordan. Just to try to deal with these Ghulams in his base. Did we see the elite upgrade? Yeah, we, we did see elite Ghulam right now. So these are fully upgraded in terms of elite and armor. Still missing some attack upgrades, of course. But Tato, what can he do accomplish with these? Gold. Yeah, like Tato, he found the gold in the north. He's done a great job being resourceful with the extra golds. But Tato cannot take his golds. Both of his golds are underneath that castle right now. So Jordan just needs to take a deep breath. He needs to get his technologies, mass, start massing his infantry, and he's got this one, and he's moving on to the quarterfinals. I love the two castles in the same spot for Jordan. Normally, I don't like that, but it's really good against a very stubborn, uh, high pierce armor unit like the Gulam to have mm -hmm. two castles in the same area as that extra layer of protection there. Jordan started off this game with a bang with the lames. In Feudal Age, he was very resourceful. He had Tato on the back foot, and it looked like Tato had clawed his way back. But Tato needs production buildings, and he needs gold, and he only has one castle to produce the Gulam. He's badly pop-capped. He's and on he's 120 housed, yeah. pop. Rough. Jordan has Jags and two-handed swordsmen. He's getting Garland Wars now, so he'll have plus four attack on, plus, on top of the plus two he already has. Jordan should have this. He's even town centering the forward gold right now. Yeah, and as you can see, Gulam's really not that impressive against the uh, infantry. Um, they shred... Eagles, Skirms, Arbalest, but they really die quite hard mm -hmm. into uh, any, anything infantry. So crazy stuff there from, um, from Jordan, making the right transitions. Also not the type of game where you can really go hand cannons, right? You don't have gold. Yes, there are answers that Hindustanis could have, but not in this type of game. And, and this is definitely a game that looks like last game of the series for Tato. If it's game one, he might have already called it at this point. His counterattacks aren't really working. Mm -hmm. He's struggling to get any type of defense. It's just getting worse and worse for him. But uh, Tato has gone to decider games a lot over the last year and a half. And it's been a bit 50-50 with those results. But he finds himself here in these final games, these big moments. He wants to close this one out. I don't see it. Jordan needs champion. Yeah. Even yeah. then, I think Garland Wars two-handed swordsman is probably enough. And while it looks a little iffy there, Jordan will move on to the quarterfinals. Congratulations to him. And what a series. Wow. Really well played, guys. Clap in the chat for Jordan. Really well done there because, I mean, that's a it's a brutal series for him. Five games. Some really long games in there as well versus his friend and a, and a fierce competitor in Tato. And to take it in a, in a, in a very nice matchup here, Hindustani Aztecs on Arabia in, in a great fashion. Really well played to Jordan. Very, very much deserved. And, uh, yeah, I can't say enough good things. The, think back to that Byzantine game on Arena. He won that yeah, one. that was huge. Like, crazy. So I, I told you that I would look back to see when Jordan moved out, and I'm at 50 seconds, and he's yeah. already halfway across the map. Like He so moved out seconds, right yeah. away. Like He didn't right find away. much of his extra resources at all, and he just took the risk that you know you can take with the eagle, and he did find benefit. It's hard for me to say that that made a, like a monstrous difference in the game because Gato did end up making the castle just similar times, but certainly I think it gave Jordan control. Uh, with that control, Jordan was able to accomplish a lot there. Um, well, Hera, thanks for thanks for casting this with me. Uh, thanks for joining. Obviously, best of luck tomorrow as well, man. I know it was thank a long you, series, so I'm really glad I had you here. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. And uh, thank you for all the work you're putting on in the back end of things with CTL as well. It's been a really nice series uh, in terms of uh, you know the, the playoffs, but also just the league in general, man. Good, good stuff and all that. And I think I'll be seeing you tomorrow for another cast as well, which is uh, really exciting. Yeah, man. Yeah, we'll figure that out. I don't know uh, what time you play. And we already we already discussed it. We'll make sure it yeah. works best for, for everybody. But thanks again, and uh, see you tomorrow, all right? Take care, bro. See ya. All right, later.